the long and winding road to the University of Missouri. Part of the state, two hours from KC, two hours from St. Louis. Now, what a journey it's been for senior wide Colorado in Boulder. College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Zera. Welcome to the Columbia, Missouri. As the number three team of the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners matches up with a surprising Missouri Tigers. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, alongside Dave Lappman. Welcome to Mizzou. Well, the Tigers, Dave, for only the third time since 1983, are three and one out of the gates. But this is going to be their first severe test. And how do they keep up with the tailback? And a lot of people have asked this question. Keep up with Quentin Griffin of Oklahoma. Well, he is special, Joel. He's the leading rusher in Oklahoma, averaging over seven yards a carry. They list him at 5'7". Truthfully, he's probably closer to 5'5". Five five. He hides behind those big offensive linemen. And then he busts out into the open field, and he's got extreme elusiveness. He always makes the first guy miss. He's the first running back that's caught the football for 1,000 yards. He blocks well. Totally complete player, totally unselfish. We can't wait to see the redshirt freshman quarterback for the Missouri Tigers, Brad Smith. He comes in third best in the Big 12 in rushing, and they're going to be after him. Now, can he deal with the speed of the Oklahoma defense? Well, that's the $1,000 question tonight, and he is the leading rusher for his football team, averaging over seven. Presented by Kia Zara with a flag down to the play. Bynum, Wright, Bell, and Ellison, a very youthful group up front. Now to 4 2 5. The whip is like an extra safety. That's Jason Thompson. Linebackers Doyle and Kenny. Then Jones had three picks last week. You've got Ferguson and King. The other two safeties in the other corner is Michael Harden, the junior from Kansas City, a former walk-on. Well, they're talking about the penalty right now with one of the captains, Kenny, a linebacker from Missouri. Oklahoma, looks like they're, Missouri's going to move him back inside the 10-yard line. This is just what they wanted, a long field for Oklahoma and a short field for themselves. An ineligible receiver downfield on Oklahoma. Five yards from the previous spot, replay first down. And Joe, they, Missouri came out right away trying to confuse Oklahoma's blocking pattern on a kickoff return by bunching all their cover guys in two spots and then unfolding. And what you have to do as a return team is point out your guy and stay with him. And they confused who they were supposed to block. And Jones is in the backfield. It'll be Kewan Jones. And he fell to the five, spins free up until the second man gets him. At the eight near the nine, Sean Doyle, the senior from Oberlin Park, Kansas, along with Wright. And Keith Wright, one of the best defensive linemen in the Big 12, a senior, junior college transfer from Sacramento, California. He was second team all Big 12 last year. And the coaches told us, don't know if we trade him for anybody right now, the way his motor's running. And I'll tell you, Joel, very disruptive. He gets in the enemy backfield 10 tackles for loss already in four football games. He's an amazing athlete. Quentin Griffin, he's in early. They slice him down across the 12 near the 13. The young men were talking about great pursuit by a 6'2", 285-pounder, Keith Wright. Well, look, at we were talking about how short Quentin Griffin is. And 5'5", uh, five, five, maximum. Look at him in the huddle. You know, that in front of his offensive lineman, they just engulf him. He disappears. You know, there goes Quentin. I mean, he's a head and a half shorter than everybody. And when he hides behind those offensive linemen running the football, it's tough for defenders to find him. And then he makes them miss so easily. Oklahoma hitting on 39% of their first end so far this season. The third and long. Dibble from the gun. He's got all day. And he's got a wide open receiver for the first down. Taking it in, Curtis Fagan, the senior from Houston. Honorable mention all Big 12 last year. So deep in their own territory, what a pick-me-up for the Sooners right away from an offense that struggled a little bit last week. And Hibble can do this. He's great with the long ball and the intermediate routes. And he does a good job of finding his receiver who breaks away from Harden. Just a deep out pattern. And the ball is right on the money, showing good arm strength. Fagan just runs a deep out and gets separation from Harden. And Hibble put it right on the numbers. Very accurate throw on third and long. Well, let's face it, though, Dave. Yeah, he had a half hour to throw. Oh, Mizzou great gives him that much time. He's going to pick him apart. There's Savage running up the back of his own blocker. Antoine Savage on the catch. The senior from Albany, Georgia. And King all over the play. Ferguson as well. Well, this is just a wide receiver screen, and one wide receiver has to block for the other. Fagan goes in motion. He's a crackback blocker, and he gets stood up and knocked backwards. I mean, that's nice physical nature right there uh, in the secondary. And, and I'll tell you, that's one of the better football players they have, Ferguson. He's a converted running back, very athletic, great blitzer, and he showed how tough he is on that play. And last year was his first year on defense. Griffin instead the shovel pitch for Ronaldo Works with blocking, and he's got a first down across the 40. 
great deception of the play fake to Griffin going one way. Ronaldo works a 6'1", 210-pound junior from Tulsa. Well, they really do have diversity in the backfield. Tremendous misdirection. Watch the action right here in the backfield. A little crossing action. Think, oh, here's the handoff there. No, it's option down the line of scrimmage and pitch. And look at all the action here. It throws everybody on going one way, going to the left. It came down the line of scrimmage and option to the right. Great call. First down from the 41. Griffin in the backfield. Pibble with plenty of time going for the bundle. He's got it inside the 25. Will Peoples, the sophomore from Humboldt, Texas, on the reception. Marcus King in coverage. And what Hibble gets done is the deep ball. He grew up throwing the deep ball. And it all starts with pass protection to give his quarterback enough time to throw the football. Twisting, stunting inside. And look, everybody for Oklahoma just stones Missouri at the line of scrimmage. Look at the vision that Hibble has. Separation. Nobody within five yards of him. Easy throw. Peoples makes the adjustment. King can't. Great pass protection, throw, and catch. Hibble audibleizing, checking off at the line with Griffin in the backfield. From the Missouri 21, it's a first down. Griffin scrambling his way inside the 20 to the 17 for a gain of four. Well, let's face it, this early in the game, Mizzou is going to have to make adjustments, and they've got to get heat on the quarterback hit, or they're going to be dead this afternoon. Oh, absolutely, because one of the concerns that, that Missouri had as a coaching staff was Oklahoma's speed at wide receiver matching up with the secondary members of Missouri. They were afraid of the double moves. Well, there haven't been any double moves. They've just run by people. So that mismatch uh, that was a concern for the Missouri staff has proven true. Works and Griffin flanking Hibble. Hibble in trouble and he's down behind the 25. Slicing through Torres Ferguson, the young man we were just talking about, who's only in his second season on the defensive side of the line. Well, that had to be a busted play right there. Hibble absolutely isn't the design runner here, and, he, and he's looking for, for somebody to get rid of the football to. Ferguson comes off the edge and just detonates the play. Was it a shovel pitch to Works, maybe? I think I think Works was supposed to work his way underneath and, and, and receive a left-handed shovel pitch from Hibble, and he was nowhere to be found, and Hibble just ate the football. Didn't want to risk an interception. Now, you know, you can throw it at the feet. It's only an incompletion, not a fumble on a shovel pass. Third and 15 for the Missouri 27. And another change. And a timeout for Oklahoma. Their first of the contest. So it started way back at the Sooners 11. They have mixed run and pass. Mostly pass, though, with a deep ball from Hibble. We'll find out what they do on third and long when we come back to Columbia. by Kia Sarah, one company, countless solutions. By Prestone, the exclusive Prestone patented dual action formula protects your engine in Prestone season. By Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Quiznos, oven toasted, tastes better. The Columns, in front of Jesse Hall, the heart of campus. And welcome back to the University of Missouri. Third and 15 for Oklahoma at the 27 of Mizzou. Hibble, will they have enough time again? Now, pressure. When he get to the marker, doesn't look that way, and he shut down inside the 20, but sets up. Good field position. The field goal attempt is Kenny caught up with him, the linebacker, near the 16. Well, the aborted shovel pass comes up large, because if Hibble doesn't have to take that, those yards in loss, they might have a first down. But Missouri ran a nice stunt in the defensive line, and they consumed Ronaldo Works, Hibble's intended target, and instead of throwing the ball at the feet, he took a sack in the red zone. So now Oklahoma has to settle for the field goal attempt. Trey DiCarlo, true freshman from Carrollton, Texas, with a 34-yard drive. The lefty will try to hook it to the far side hash mark. And he pushed it. Yep. Oklahoma comes up empty. So DiCarlo came into the game four for five. He's now missed two, and Mizzou gets it for the first time. Back to the heart of the show me state of Missouri. We are two hours from St. Louis, two hours from Kansas City, and this may be the prettiest fall football weekend we have had yet. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Mara Clemens in Columbia, 67,000 here for the matchup between Missouri and Oklahoma. And now Brad Smith, the redshirt freshman quarterback with Zach Abram in the backfield. And they're throwing the slant on first down as it's knocked away from Justin Gage, his first catch of the day, and it's a record setter. Well, Brad Smith, 98 yards a game, the redshirt freshman from Youngstown, Ohio, leads the attack for Missouri. Diaz is starting 11 for the Tigers. Greggy Palmer, the experience on the left side, Ricker, Giannino, and Pathrath up front. And Abron and Gage, Outlaw, James, and Fredrickson, the skill guys. 
It'll be Abram. Plugging his way across the 25. Between the tackles, tough running against this Oklahoma defense. He gets seven. And now for one of the best defensive units in the country, the Kia 7. Starting lineup defensively for Oklahoma, Wilkerson, Harris. Keep your eyes on 97 today. Klein up front, along with Jackson. Jackson, Mitchell, Teddy Lehman. The linebackers, Perkins on one corner, Derek Strait on the other. Bassey and Everidge, and a lot of people around the country have gotten to know these names over the last couple of years. Oklahoma has been that efficient defensively. Now, third and three for Missouri. Will Smith keep it in his own hands? Will he run for it? He's looking for a seal. And he maneuvers. He gets it across the 30. Boy, what patience by a redshirt freshman. Dave, he didn't exactly rush the play, did he? No, he didn't. He showed that poise and patience that we've heard so much about. And when you're an All-American like Tommy Harris, you get double teamed. He's fighting a groin injury right now. He's still not 100%. Gets chop blocked right there. And he went down like a big old timber. He's not happy about that, but... You get a lot of attention paid to you when you're Tommy Harris. And, and I'll tell you, the coaches for Oklahoma said, we don't want third and medium because Smith will kill you on third and medium. Too many options. We want third and long. Smith looking at the quick rhythm play. In trouble. And gets away from Harris. He had room, but he'll throw instead. And he's close to a first down as the catch is made by Marcus James, the junior from Liberal, Kansas. So he could have run for a few yards, but he saw about eight or nine in front of him. Well, that's another creation of a play by a true freshman, eight, or a redshirt freshman, 18 years old, won't be 19 years old until December. And all he did that time was stiff arm the All-American Tommy Harris to the ground and get out of pocket and throw the ball for positive yards. One yard short of a first down, this kid is special. Well, Gary Finkel told us yesterday, so you gotta remember when he made his official visit, he was a senior in high school, he was still only 16. Right. First down, make it second in a yard for Mizzou. Abram maneuvering and angling. He's got a first down to the 44. Shut down out of the secondary by the linebacker, Lance Mitchell. And a good job because after reversing his field, if Mitchell doesn't get him, it could have been a big gainer for Missouri. Working against an Oklahoma defensive unit that comes in today, 10th best in the nation, giving up only 262 yards a game. They're ninth against the run. That is 88 a contest they hold their opponents to. And fifth best in scoring defense. So that's what Missouri's got to deal with today. And all that team speed, they're fast everywhere. Out of the gun. It's a draw. Smith breaking tackles and barely tripped up after a gain of four. Everidge got him the free safety. He is elusive. He got away from Tommy Harris in the backfield. Well, this fall, get your NFL fix a day early. You can get it tonight, in fact, late tonight. The NFL show on Fox Sports Net. Michael Irvin, Tony Saragusu, Tommy Davidson also in there. Chris Myers. Get ready. It's all brought to you. The NFL show by the U.S. Postal Service. That's tonight after college football only on Fox Sports Net. Second and long for Missouri at the 48 of the Tigers. Abram again, making a miss. He's got a first down. And this young man, as well, is off to a sensational start for the Missouri Tigers. He comes in sixth best in the Big 8, or Big 12, I should say, in rushing, Dave. 82 yards a game. Well, I'll tell you what was done on the back side of the offensive line. On, on the top of the screen, watch the cutoff block. Lead block by the fullback. Tremendous effort. Pancake here on the front side. But look at this seam. Look at the back side right here. Just blow it up. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. He makes the unblocked guy miss. Zach Abram does. Nice play, nice blocking up front. A huge, huge cavity to the Red Sea party. First down, Missouri in Oklahoma territory at the 43. Smith in trouble. Over shooting his man, and he's lucky it wasn't picked off as he wanted to go to the tight end, Ben Fredrickson. So that was the first poor pass or decision we've seen from Brad Smith. Well, Brad Smith, you talked about when he was a senior in high school, Joel, 16 years old. When he came to Missouri, 6 feet, 178 pounds, only 17 years old. Now, 6'3", 200 pounds, a late bloomer. They've got themselves a diamond in the rough. His upside potential is enormous, and his learning curve is going straight vertical on a daily basis. Now on second and 10, quick one underneath. Gage has the record. He is now Missouri's all-time reception leader as he's brought down by Teddy Lehman. So congratulations to a guy that has persevered, played basketball early in his career, Came in with 151 career catches, and that tied him with Kenny Holly has surpassed the totals of Holly, who was set between 90 and 93. I'm sure he wishes it was more than a one-yard reception, but it is a record. And I'll tell you, this guy is, now that he's concentrating solely on playing the wide receiver position, 
He's really polishing his route running abilities, running more precise routes, getting in and out of cuts. Got great hands and great size, obviously, because of that basketball. Now third and nine, press coverage on the outside. Smith looking for Gage on the slant, and it's deflected at the line. It was deflected before it ever got close to Gage, so a punting situation coming up for Missouri. Missouri will once again play field position, try to pin Oklahoma back inside their own 10-yard line and make them go long field. Because of that poor field position on the first drive, even though Oklahoma moved the football, they couldn't score. The field goal was missed. Well, this young man may be the key to the attack for Missouri today because he's got to keep it away from Antonio Perkins. And he's had two punt returns for touchdowns already this year. He'll directional kick it to his left on this time. Kick it away from Perkins to his left. The punter's left. Rock Harvey, as you said, angling it over to the near side, over the head of Perkins, and it takes a Missouri roll, but it doesn't die. It hits softly inside the 10, finds the end zone. So a short one net-wise for Brock Harvey. As it was only a net of 22 yards on the punt. And now Oklahoma has it for the second time at their own 20-yard line. Well, Perkins, not only two punt returns for touchdowns, Joel, 91 and 82 yards, long returns for touchdowns. Well, Quentin Griffin, the one who always gets so many touches on our Healthy Choice leaderboard among Division 1A running backs. He's got 32 consecutive with at least one catch. He's got over 1,000 yards in that department. The only running back ever in Oklahoma history to do that. This time it's Kewan Jones. And he's dropped trying to turn the corner by James Kenny. Good speed by the sophomore from Kankakee, Illinois. Kewan Jones is their short yardage specialist normally. He's got six rushing touchdowns. He's been the goal line short yardage guy. Given... Uh, Mr. Griffin a little bit of a break on that play. Griffin checks back into the football game, and Jones checks out. A game of about three. Call it second and seven. Well, ten minutes gone in the opening 15 minutes of play. Hibble looking underneath. Close to the first down, and struggling trying to get it as Will Peoples. His second grab of the game, but Antoine Duncan would not let him go. They're going to be short of the first down by a little more than two. Well, Missouri's defensive football team is up in the bit tonight. I mean, they're hustling and they're pursuing everything. This is the conference opener for both football teams, and both coaches said that uh, the week of practice was full of excitement and enthusiasm. They sense, uh, have a sense of urgency. They want to win their conference openers, and both teams are playing that way. Well, Griffin touched the ball here on third and two. He sets up next to Hibble. The option for Griffin. And he's got the first down across the 32 as they push it back from there. Good timing on the pitch by Hebel. Jamal Brown, the right tackle with a key block, a sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. What Oklahoma has done is tighten their splits this year with the offensive line and try to establish the running game. Nice job by the center pulling and getting a hook block down the line of scrimmage. That's a fantastic effort. And look at big Trent Smith stay with his block. Skinner does a good job down the football field as well. Decent job of finishing blocks, sustaining contact. First down, Sooners outside of their own 32. Hibble again. Great lane to look and throw, and he's got a wide open receiver, Peoples. First down at the 49. So the offensive line could not be doing a better job for Nate Hibble. No question about it, Joe. They're giving him total vision down the football field, and he can throw the rock now. Hibble can throw the ball. He's not the most mobile guy in the world, but these big guys up front are protecting him. Look at the pocket that they form for Hibble. I mean, he is, he can step, look at this. He can have a cup of coffee, read the classified ad, step up and deliver the football just like he did. Going to have to get some kind of pressure in his face to at least hasten his decision making. He's a guy who's not been intercepted this year and perfect so far today, and he's got time. Throwing deep over the middle for Savage. That just off target. His first miss of the game, R.J. Jones on the coverage. A young man who had three interceptions last week. Going back to last season now, Hibble has thrown 122 passes without an interception. And that makes 90 of them are this season. So Hibble is making good decisions with the football. He's not beating his own football team. Game management, what coaches talk about. Second and 10 for the Sooners. The ball to their own 49. It'll be Jones trying to spread his way up the middle. 
close. He's horse got her down in a hurry by Antoine Bynum, the left hand, a senior from Parkway Central High School in St. Louis. Well, what Oklahoma's trying to do, talked about a little bit earlier, tighten the splits and establish a ground game. And look at those two-point stances. Still have to get the pad level low. And the pad level not quite low enough. And Bynum with a great disruption right there. Took on he two, didn't he? Took on the double team and, and got his pad level lower than theirs and won. In football, it's physics. Low man wins. Now it can hit a negotiate nine yards. Trouble from behind, going deep, and he's got a man over the middle and overthrows Curtis Bacon. He but, was working against Michael Harden, who had pretty decent coverage anyway. But Missouri's uh, coaching staff encouraged because Hibble hit the deck. For the first time all night long, Hibble got hit and knocked to the turf. The protection's been outstanding. And Hibble tries to step up in the pocket here and still gets hit. And after he releases the football, he gets kind of taken in half, cut in half a little bit, and jackknifes backwards. That's a dangerous hit when a quarterback gets hit in the knees and the thigh area like that. Marcus James waits for the punt from Blake Ferguson. Special teams, so important today. We talk about it, but especially with the return kind of game that Oklahoma has. James calling for the fair catch, takes it in cleanly outside of his own 10-yard line. So Missouri in dangerous field position against a defense like Oklahoma. We'll see how the redshirt freshman quarterback handles it when we return. Got a football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Welcomes you back to the Big 12 opener for the Missouri Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners. We're at Don Perot Field. Found a magnificent night, mid-Missouri. Game time temperature right around 70 degrees. And Brad Smith working early under, out of the shotgun, now under his center. Back outside of his own 10. Looking for Gage, in trouble, and Smith now trying to do too much on his own. He's lucky he held on to the football. Boy, he has it way down there in one hand. That is dangerous. Dvorak making the hit. And let's head back to the studio now for a Dr. Pepper game break with Chris Rose. Chris? All right, Joe, thanks. Purdue and Iowa, fourth down. Brad Banks, the misdirection, the TD toss to Dallas Clark, and they're 5-1. and one. Dave, I'd say the Hawkeye State is the football capital of the world. And the only loss for Iowa, don't forget, Iowa State and Seneca Wallace. To Brad Smith, I bet the Oakland coaches are saying spike the ball away. He holds it out there. It's up for grabs. Now in trouble and throws it away. That was a smart play from his own goal line. But Dave, on that previous snap, when he was maneuvering to the backfield and trying to escape, he had the ball on his side like a loaf of bread, as they say. He sure did, but he did show the jackhammer feet. Man, does he have a change of direction. And, and ultimately, Oklahoma did sack him for a one-yard loss. That's only Oklahoma's fifth sack of the year. Coming in four sacks in four games. Very non-Oklahoma-like, but they faced a lot of scramblers. But this defensive football team, they have defensive backs that run in the 4-3s, linebackers that run 4-4-40s, defensive linemen that run 4-6-40s. They have tremendous quickness and speed. So now third and better than 10. Close to 11. Smith out of the gun. Here comes the blitz. Going deep. And his man was all turned around. No flags on the play as he tried to get it to Darius Outlaw. Eric Bassey on the coverage. And three and out with a punt. The last thing Missouri needed deep in their own territory. And what uh, Oklahoma wanted was third and long with Brad Smith. Third and medium. Too many options. Tommy Harris, we see right there, he is he's struggling. He's got a groin injury. He hasn't practiced much the last couple of weeks trying to heal up that groin. He's not playing the type of football that Tommy Harris played last year at this stage. Brock Harvey under the gun again because Antonio Perkins waits back at the 45-yard line of Oklahoma. Got to kick it away from this young man. Angles it over to the near side, trying to pin him to the boundary. Perkins has it to the 48 of Missouri and looks for a wall. Gets a big block. No flags on the play. Another block. But he's horse counter down right of the midfield strike. And what a tackle by Brandon Smith. But was it a face mask at the end of the play? Could have been. Boy, and I, I thought Oklahoma got away with an illegal block. I thought Connor threw a, an illegal block in the back as well. Would it be five or 15? When you get the, when you bring your hands up around the headgear, that's what you're in danger of. You get up around the shoulder pads and the headgear, you're in danger of exactly this, just grabbing Place and ripping. Man. 
on Missouri. Five yards from the front of the foul. First down. And that's Brandon Smith, linebacker, with the penalty. Dr. Pepper, Big 12 Player of the Week, just talking about Seneca Wallace. Against Nebraska, 220 yards passing. Rush for another 50. He does everything for that team, but what a tough schedule Iowa State has coming up. I mean, they hit the road for some of the most difficult contests that yep. any team in the Big 12 will see in the second half of the season. Not only the yards, but Seneca Wallace threw for one and rushed for two. A touchdown maker against the Cornhuskers. Quentin Griffin, short side of the field, and decent yardage for five. Down to the Mizzou 40-yard line. They'll give him a 39 in fact, so call it six for Quentin Griffin. On a tight side, R.C. Jones bringing him down, the cornerback. Well, you know, talk about his height. I I'm saying 5'5", five, five, but he's 190 pounds. He's stacked. I mean, if this guy were six feet tall, he'd be about 230. So he's got deceptive strength. I mean, he, he squats 635 pounds. He runs a 4 three, five, 40. He's a player. Well, what's so great about him, the 55 catches last year, that he can get touches in so many different positions. The shovel pitch, the handoff. Downfield he goes, and now Hibble running the option. He'll keep it himself, and he'll get a first down. The Missouri 35. They may, may need a measurement, but he's close. He's put down by the whip, Jason Simpson. Well, that uh, that caught Missouri by surprise to have the uh, the not very fleet-footed or quick-footed Hibble running the option into the boundary. And especially when you've got a true freshman with no experience, really hardly any repetitions, even in practice, Paul Thompson as his backup. They're high on him. You know, they're not sure they have a, a Smith on their hands like Missouri does at this stage, but they are high on him. But you, as you say, Joel, he hasn't shown his ability to play yet. And yeah. they're about a credit card short. You slide a credit card in there, Kane. Well, let's face it. Hibble is taking maybe a third of the reps. White starts the season, so he's taking two-thirds. Right. So what's left over, if anything, was Paul Thompson through the first few weeks of the season. Running the other team's plays. Without a doubt. I mean, that's all he did was get his defense ready by running the other team's snaps. So. And there's Thompson. Very, very athletic quarterback. You know, he's one of the new breed, can create plays with his feet, as well as a very, very strong throwing arm. But there's nothing like game reps. I mean, you can practice all you want, all day long, until you get out there and have to make decisions at game speed. It's a different animal. J.D. Runnels in the game now for Oklahoma. And make it Kiwan Jones behind him. Hibble going for the bundle. Looking for Savage. He's got it at the 10. Brought down inside the 5. Well, what Bob Stoops did on that play, Joel, by going over the top, he had decided if it was incomplete, I was going for it on 4th and inches. So he said, I, in my mind, I have a throwaway down, and let's go for the jugular. Good call. And he went down the football field to Savage. Maximum protection, play action fake, freezes the linebackers, freezes everybody. Over the top, we go to Savage. Big play, first and goal, and Bob Stoops saying, you know what? I'm going for the gusto right now because I have confidence in my old line on fourth and inches. No center fielder playing deep to help out Harden. Jones dives, he's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. The redshirt freshman from Jenks, Oklahoma, Kewan Jones, with the first points of the day. And Hibble showing his ability to get the ball down the football field to the deep quadrants, middle and both right and left of the football field accurately. He, he grew up in high school throwing the deep ball, and he can get it done. And the touchdown maker, that's his seventh rushing touchdown of the season now. He is the short yardage goal line machine. Trey DiCarlo, 18 of 19 on point after so far. Makes it a 7-0 lead for the Sooners. There's 65 seconds left in the first 15 minutes of play. And the number three team of the nation finds the end zone. These people are getting answers to the most important questions they'll ever ask. Questions about their health. 7-0 lead for Oklahoma over Missouri. The Oklahoma Sooners, one of the three undefeated ones. The only conference of Big 12 with three undefeated teams to start play today. Texas already won, barely got by Oklahoma State at home 17-15. Colorado upset Kansas State, so Kansas State suffering their first loss, and now Oklahoma with the lead. James and Ferguson back deep. It'll be Marcus James with a short one of the nine-yard line. Looking for a wall, oh, and they get 
Ferguson instead as he's crossing the 25 and put down at the 28 yard line. Now there's a former running back before he converted to defense and he showed a little bit of running back ability there. Big play on that last touchdown drive was the third and inches down the football field to Savage over the top. Hibble with a little play action fake, two tight end set. And then of course the touchdown on the very next snap finalized by Jones, the touchdown maker, his seventh touchdown of the season, and Oklahoma's got a seven-point lead. Great field position for Missouri as they start their third drive of the day, and Zach Abram, the junior from Francis Howell High School in St. Louis, pulled down by Lance Mitchell. No gain. In fact, he lost a yard. So we talked about this defense and the way they can wear you down, and we're seeing it early in the first quarter. Well, when you have a defense that's got tremendous quickness at the line of scrimmage, Joel, you, you, you do a penetration, a one-gap penetration scheme, and try to disrupt the timing and blocking assignments of the offensive line. Second and 11, two to each side. And Smith now on a double move as a wide open receiver and overthrows Justin Gage. Gage looked like he might have been bumped on the sideline out of bounds. Yep. And then miscalculated by Smith for a Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri. It is an absolutely perfect setting, and what a day weather-wise as the Missouri Tigers get together with the Oklahoma Sooners. And for those of you that were on Sports South watching the Angels of the Yankees, Joel Myers, Dave Latton, Eric Clements, in the middle of Missouri, and will it be a ball game? Missouri comes in at 3-1, and one. Oklahoma undefeated, and Missouri in trouble again on third and long. Smith with the pocket holding up, now in trouble and overshooting everybody. He takes his shot from Tommy Harris at the end of the play. And it's going to be three and out again for the Tigers. Well, Tommy Harris wanted to get something for all of his work. And this guy is an effort guy, once again getting double teamed. He finally works his way up the football field and, and gets a shot on Smith after he unloads the football. This guy is a special athlete. He can bench press 315 pounds, 20 reps. I mean, that's a, that's a man. 287 pounds, runs a 4640. That's unfair. That's a genetic marvel right there. Brock Garvey punts again in the final second of the first quarter to Antonio Perkins. Let's see if he can get it over to the left side. Tries to angle it again. Keaton to the boundary. He's going to hang it, hang this one up high. It's at the right hash mark. Little hang time right down the right hash mark. And they go in the reverse. Perkins giving it up. There should be a block in the back, but there's no flag at the 50. Knocked out of bounds is Will Peoples. Well, the Mizzou fans, you can hear them booing in the background. They saw what I saw, but there was no flag from the official. Well, you got a guy here in Perkins who's got four punt returns for 20 yards or more already in this young season at a fifth. He is special when he touches the football. You know, they had a return guy in their national championship season. J.T. Thatcher was the thicker guy that broke tackles. This guy's a speed guy. Well, he puts him in position in Missouri territory. When we come back, they've got it at the Mizzou 48-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. It is Oklahoma 7, Missouri nothing. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Serra on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma on the 20-yard field goal by Trey DiCarlo. Now owns a 10 to nothing lead. The other score, a two-yard touchdown run by Kiwan Jones. And the Sooners have completely dominated the game for the most part, except for that first drive by Missouri when they stalled inside Oklahoma's territory. Enterprise scoring drive, Sooners, five plays, 29 yards. It came after the pick, so points off a turnover. And it's going to be Torres Ferguson bringing it back from his own six. With blocking up front, but a collapse in a hurry across the 20 to the 22, or Mizzou will have it to start their fifth possession of the game. But first, a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's head back to our College Football Saturday studio and Chris Rose. Chris. All right, guys, in College Station, AM scored first in overtime. This is the PAT that put Kingsbury fifth TD talk of the day. They would get the point after for the upset win. And speaking of upsets, the New York Yankees are going home. They will not be World Series bound for the first time since 97. Anaheim's moving on. Back to you. I tell you, I like that. I like well, Anaheim no moving shot. on, Chris. No I really shot. do. The best two teams at the end of the season, the last two months, Anaheim and Oakland. Yeah. Now Smith with Abram. 
Weaves his way to the 25. He won't quit, will he? He gets close to the 20. Straight, straighten him out. It's a gain of close to five. Well, this week on Fox NFL Sunday, Michael Strand leading the New York Giants up against Emmett Smith and the Cowboys. How about Donovan McNabb right after that game of the Philadelphia Eagles trying to make it four consecutive victories as they take on Fred Taylor and the Jaguars down in Jacksonville. It's all this week. Only on Fox. Good matchup right here. Gage on straight. Gage on straight. Boundary side of the field. Second a little more than five. That's a lateral pass. Block for the receiver, and there goes the wide receiver, Marcus James. And it was Darius Outlaw actually on the far side of the field for Missouri first down, but they need to pick up some first downs, even if they can't get points. They need to hold on to the football and give their defense a break. Absolutely, no more three and outs for a while. And here's another former quarterback, Outlaw, and that ball's deflected. I mean, safety gets his hand on the football and reroutes it. Excellent job. Bassey got his hand on the ball, and nice job by Outlaw to concentrate on it and catch that deflected pass. Outlaw senior from Powder Springs, Georgia. This is his first season at wide receiver. Now Smith on first and ten, and he's got all day. And he wants to go for the deep ball. He's got Gage and he can't hang on. What a play. Gage on straight again. And Gage found the football before straight did. Underthrown slightly. Gage could not come up with the play. He did everything but catch it. And that's the most important thing to do, obviously. It would have been a first down inside the Oklahoma 20-yard line. Straight, right through his hand. Yeah, straight. He's late turning and finding the football. Gage makes the adjustment, comes back, gets two hands on it. And boy, 99 times out of 100, Gage is going to catch that pig right there, but he didn't that time. We wondered about the arm strength. There's the deep ball. Yep. Right here, freshman Brad Smith. Slow beginning for him, though. Once again, calling his own number. He comes in third in the Big 12 and rushing at 98 a game. Jimmy Wilkerson, quick to the corner, though, along with Derek Strait. You know, and they, the coaching staff from Missouri wants to call eight to ten running plays that are called with him running the football. They, they think that much of his ability to run it. Now, he'll improvise and run the ball more than that as things break down. But they call quarterback draw, quarterback sweep, quarterback counter eight to ten times a game for him. So now third and long. Third and eight for Missouri as Outlaw goes in motion. Here comes the blitz. Underneath, Gage has it. Runs into his own net. Maintains his balance, believe it or not. Gage running through arm tackles and pulled down by straight. Oh, what a play by Justin Gage, and he showed why he's a power forward in basketball. I'll tell you, he showed extreme balance and body control there because he was like a human pinball. He got ricocheted, an Oklahoma defender hit him, and then he got rerouted and, and, and righted by his own teammate. As he comes inside on, on the receiver screen, he gets he gets popped by Bassey, and then he gets rerouted by his own player that, that sets him down the course of, of the football field properly, and big yards and big play by Gage. Missouri was desperate for it, and they've got it at the Oklahoma 15, halfway through the second quarter. Tight formation this time for the Tigers. Abram, big hole over to the left side, scrambles for about five, close to the 10 before he's tripped up. But the middle linebacker, Lance Mitchell. You know, I talked about uh, how Oklahoma, Oklahoma has been in the red zone 20 times already. This is only the sixth time all year they've let the opposition in the red zone. When we were talking to the Missouri coaches, they said, we don't see any goal line snaps. I mean, they don't let anybody down here. Now, here's Missouri in the red zone, almost inside the 10-yard line. Have to be efficient here. Don't make any mistakes. Spread the defense, Dave, with two to each side. You know, Gage, 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 this is where you can use his height. What about that? Smith can't get away. Once Ooh. again from Lance Mitchell. What a play by the middle linebacker. Junior college, transfer to Oklahoma. He took the place. Basically, Teddy Lehman moved from middle linebacker to Rocky Kalmus' spot, and Mitchell came in. 6'3", 245 pounds, runs a 4'6", 540. So size speed ratio again. And played on two national championship teams for the City College of San Francisco. I'll tell you, he knows how to win, and now he's in another winning program in Oklahoma. So third and long for the Tigers. Smith again out of the gun. Out on the motion man with a little chip. Gage has it, but he's well short of the first down. 
He's out of bounds to the eight. Got to put points on the board. Can't think four down territory here, I don't think. Got to get something on the you board to it. slice into this lead. Can't walk away empty this early in the game. Mike Matheny comes on. A junior who walked on. And he's been a pleasant surprise so far for the Missouri Tigers. I think if it's fourth and inches, you think about it, but not fourth and three against this Oklahoma defense. You gotta, you gotta take this field goal and, and cut it to a one-score game. So Mavini trying to put the Tigers on the board. 26-yard attempt off oh, the upright. I tell you, bad snap, Joel. You said it. You could see the knuckleball yep. off it. Inside snap. The holder struggled to get it down in a timely fashion, and Mathini hooked it. The operation wasn't clean. So a poor exchange all the way around. Bad break for the Tigers. Still a shutout for the Sooners. Coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, I'll be joined by Kellen and Artie with all the scores and highlights. We've got several upsets brewing in top 25 action, plus the shocker in the baseball playoffs that Artie's not very happy about. That's all later, but right now back to Joe and Dave in Columbia. All right, thank you, Chris. We've got 4.35 left in the first half. Missouri with their best field position to start a drive so far at the midfield strike. Now for the capitalize. Abram, the quick hitter. And the gang tap. He was slowed down. Lance Mitchell again. Knifing through. And also into the play, Tommy Harris busting things up. Absolutely. I mean, it starts up front. And this is like an arrow coming out of the bow. Whew. And he's in the backfield. And he's, he's at the quarterback's legs. I mean, that's disruption at its best right there. Tommy Harris says, enough of this. I'm getting up the football field. Man, what a get off. The defensive player of the year as among freshmen last season. They shift Gage to short side. Matching up the straight once again. Second and long. Second and about 13. Gage on a little screen underneath. And Justin Gage pulled down by the ankles. Short of the first down by three. Derek Strait saved that one. Joel, you know the Missouri coaches had a game plan, a formula, how to handle the speed of, of Oklahoma. Three-step drop to get the ball out of there. Run screen passes to slow down the rush. Brad Smith, kind of make him be respected in the ground game. And when they do run the football with the running backs, hit quickly north and south. No sideline to sideline. And sprint out passes. Get Brad Smith out of pocket. Change the launch point. Don't make him a sit and duck. Smith looks at a third and three. Will he keep it himself? The play fake. And Smith follows his blocking perfectly. He's got the first down inside the 30. 28-yard line of Oklahoma. He's forced out. Palmer on that side, along with Rob Draghi, a junior from St. Louis's Lindbergh High School. Good seal. 6'3", 200 pounds with 4'5 speed. And he's 18 years old. I'd say this man has an upside potential what that's, about, that's phenomenal. What about a cool customer? as an 18-year-old. Really, I mean, poised beyond his years. The coaches say he's 18 going on 38. I mean, just an unbelievable person. Great leader for this football team. Natural-born leader. First and 10 Tigers at the Sooners 28. Abram made a miss in the backfield. Only gets a couple after all is said and done, though. Down to the 26, tripped up by and Jonathan Jackson and Eric Bassey, the strong safety. So Missouri's got to have a running game. They can't put too much pressure. And they had some success early on the ground, but it's been shut down recently by Oklahoma. And Smith with seven lugs for 55 yards, the leading ground gainer once again, averaging almost eight a pop, just like he has all season long. He's averaging over seven yards per carry coming in. He's doing nothing to hurt his average tonight. But for Abram, it's 10 for only 26. Somebody else has got to get it going out of the backfield. Smith on the deeper drop uh -oh. in trouble and dumps it off. It's his tight end. Ben Fredrickson. He only got a yard to the 25. Good recovery in the secondary by Oklahoma. So Brad Smith again showing his poise and his patience. Didn't tip his hand early, did he? No, he didn't. He held on to the ball to the last possible minute. This guy is, uh, man, he is the cool, calm, collected customer they talked about. And all three timeouts remaining for Smith and Missouri. And they may want to use one here. This is a big third down inside of two minutes to play. They will. You Good know, call. a guy like that, at 18 years old, that, that is, is that calm, he's got huddle presence. I mean, everybody in that huddle is looking at him saying, I know you're only 18 years old, but I know you can play, and I know you're our leader. And that's big early in his career. As Dave mentioned, 
6'3", 200 pounds is the dimension so far for Brad Smith. He's only 18. Now, I've seen plenty of kids get to college and grow another inch or two or even more. And everybody's talking about the comparison with Seneca Wallace. Remember, right. Seneca Wallace is 5'11", a little more than 200 pounds. But they both have that escapability of, and, as you said, huddle presence. And remember, Seneca Wallace is a senior. We're looking at a redshirt freshman. Now, if he's being compared to Seneca Wallace as a redshirt freshman, it's hard to project him as a senior, what he might be able to do. I mean, because his, uh, his growth chart is going straight vertical, in, mentally and physically. Remember, this is only his fifth college football game, and it's against the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners, who arguably, if not the best defense in college football over the last three or four years, there's not a whole lot of company with them. Comes in today second of the Big 12 in total offense. We're not going to break their rhythm tonight. Yeah, I don't care it. what we say. I, I like that look. I, 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 I'm requesting right now pink hair next week. Yeah, that's good. I like the propeller. Spin that thing. This is so convenient, though, for the two cities, uh, the principal cities in the state. It's exactly two hours from Kansas City, exactly two hours from St. Louis. They do have a great football weekend in Columbia. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra returns to Fox Sportsnet next week. The Golden Bears of California match up with the 18th-ranked USC Trojans at a Pac-10 showdown. It all starts with the College Football Saturday kickoff show, 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sportsnet. Now the key third down for the Tigers and the zoo so far. Four of eight on their third down tries. They send James in motion. Plenty of action to the backfield. Inside the 20. There goes Gage. Will he take an interject? It is Brad Smith hanging onto the football. What deception in the backfield. Joel, it was the exact same play that, that he ran earlier with Zach Abram coming underneath and him running the quarterback counter. Good blocking on the right side of the offensive line. They pulled the left guard and left tackle and they escorted him around the corner. Great play. Little fake. Avery, here comes the off guard and off tackle. They get their blocks. And off to the house goes Smith. Excellent call. A design quarterback run. Remember, when Abram is in the backfield with him, that's not a one-back set. That's a two-back set. And he showed he's as good as any running back in the Big 12. What does that mean to Missouri going to the locker of a 25-yard touchdown run? I think by Brad Smith. There's going to be a celebration, celebration penalty, which is not going to help. Michael Matheny well, and the entire team that handles it. Farmers, you mentioned the holder, the snapper, is Scott Seals, a junior from right here in Columbia. Gary Pinkle's on the field going crazy. He said, what is that? What's that all about? He wants an explanation. He didn't see any, any excessive celebration. He's saying, for crying out loud, it's the third best team in the country. And you saw what he just said? Both sides. Yeah, exactly. And, and Gary's not happy at all. And that's a disciplinarian. And Gary will talk to his team. But I didn't see anything excessive, Joel, unless somebody said something. You can't see that, obviously. You can't hear it from way up here, but this is a, a little bit of a challenge for right. a PAT now. It's just a little outside the 25, so a 35-yard extra point try. Another bad snap, but Matheny right on target. Yep. I'll tell you, Kirk Farmer has got good hands. Kirk Farmer's making bad snaps makeable. In the Big 12, if Missouri could hang close to the first half, with the Sooners, they could make a ball game of it. Well, it's only a three-point deficit now. The Savage and Perkins wait for the kickoff. And backpedaling with no momentum. Savage will keep it right in the end zone. Another look at the great deception of well, Brad Smith. Watch Abram take the defense this way. Backside guard and tackle both pull the old counter. Watch Tony Palmer cover up on his block. Great block right there. Boom. That's a tough guy. Oklahoma offered him. He came to Missouri. Downfield blocked by the wide receiver. Tremendous effort right there by James. And then special by Smith. He's got the jackhammer feet. He can make people miss. Great execution. Great call. You know, you were just talking about Tony Palmer, who's making his second career as starter, a redshirt freshman from just outside of Norman. This young man was offered a scholarship by Oklahoma, but it was already a commitment to Missouri, and he lived by his commitment. Uh, that's a, that's a stand-up guy right there, and he's loving this matchup. Now a handle hit again. As he released it, he was hit by Keith Wright. He's been on his wall a lot with Wright on top of him. Bell is back, and it's better than ever. The undisputed champion of pregame shows. It's all coming back as J.B. Terry Howie and Jimmy kick off another NFL weekend. This week, NFL legend Joe Namath joins the guys and tells him who he thinks the elite quarterbacks in the game are today. Fox NFL Sunday. It returns this week only on Fox tomorrow morning. All followed by Giants.
Dallas Cowboys, Eagles, and the Jags. And Missouri has taken over in this quarter. Quick Griffin trying to get a first down. He's close. Out of bounds. Well, who would have thunk that uh, Missouri would outrush Oklahoma by 106 to 35 yards at this stage of the football game? Well, let's not forget that last week, South Florida had almost 100 more yards of total offense. Oklahoma had only 239 for the game, so they sputtered a little bit at home. Right, and, and really, the main contributor, Brad, to those, uh, Joel, is Brad Smith to those 106 yards. I mean, he's probably got, what, 70 of them? Big third down, Dave. Minute 40 to play in the half. They spread it. Short side of the field. Griffin, will it get there? I believe. No. There they finally spot it. That was a tough one. He may not get it. Left foot, right foot. Jason Simpson, the whip, the extra safety, got over there, tried to hold him up. Boy, look at look at the, the replace all divots out there. That field is coming up in chunks. Man, they're just the guys are digging in tonight. And uh, you've seen a little bit of slip sliding away going on out there. Some unassisted tackles due to the soft field. And, and, and Missouri holds. It. And Oklahoma and Missouri punts. should stop the clock. Absolutely. They ought to call a timeout right away. They've got two timeouts remaining. I'm surprised they're not. And why is Oklahoma quick Money, kicking? Right. This quickly as Marcus James waits for it. He'll take it awkwardly at the 30 and goes down in a heap. He wasn't comfortable when he took it. Will Peoples all over the play. There's a flag down. Now, was Oklahoma down the football field too quickly in coverage? Or was there some kind of a hold going on? On the, on? On the edge? I think they were, look, the official saying grab and pull down. So Missouri may be called for holding. Now, when did the hold occur? Before the ball was in the air? That's key, too. It's fourth down and just a skosh. I mean, it's fourth and hardly anything. So if, they, if it's a holding penalty on, on Missouri, it's a first down for Oklahoma, and it is. It's a first down for Oklahoma anyway. Was it post-possession? As you mentioned, though. Let's see. Uh, if the ball was in the air, the hole is going to be marked off from the spot of the of the uh, of the dead ball. If it happened prior to the kick, it's an Oklahoma first down, and it looks like they're marking it off. The ball was already airborne, a post-kick foul. So Missouri will have the football, but back it around their own 20. During the kick, Missouri, 10 yards from the end of the game, first down. And now if you're Missouri with two timeouts left, 59 seconds on the board, how much do you want to gamble? Chris, Kellen, Artie, coming up next with the Nissan Halftime Report. Some upsets in college football today, some wild ones like Texas Tech taking on Texas A&M. And then what about the upset of the Major League Baseball playoffs? We'll be telling you about that story in Southern California. It happened not too far from the studio they're sitting. Absolutely. And you know what, Joel? A lot of close games, a lot of upsets today. We have a close one tonight. It's all due to the 85 scholarship limit. That has created parity in college football that I think is great for the game. And it looks like Missouri is going to take a knee and, and, and make some adjustments at halftime and not risk turning the football over in a short field. I don't think you have to gamble when you got a quarterback like Brad Smith, but at the same time, I'd like to spread the defense and let Brad Smith run the football. Right. Uh, you know, I, the, the thing that and is... And that's not gambling. The thing that's amazing, back to the point about the 85 scholarship deal, people are... It, it's not like it was in the old days. You don't you don't blow people out. You, you know, you beat good football like South Florida. South Florida's got a bunch of kids that transferred from Florida, from Georgia, from Alabama... They got a great quarterback. You don't crush teams like that anymore. So one more snap. And that'll do it for a pick-me-up first half for the Missouri Tigers. Let's face it, Missouri came in a huge underdog in this matchup. Well, and they go to the locker room down by only three. And Smith kept his composure. And I'll tell you what, he adjusted to the speed of Oklahoma's defense. He ran the ball at him effectively. So Missouri, after... 30 minutes of play has only been outgained by 16 yards and had four more snaps. Gage had a big play, but most of the big plays coming from number 16, Brad Smith, down to the sideline. Eric Lemons? All right, Coach, 10-7, probably what you expected here, your assessments of the first half. Well, uh, you know, they're playing good football. We're playing decent football. We uh, defensively gave up a drive right at the end. Quarterback, you know, some of the quarterback run game we got to be better at. Offensively, we're moving it. We got to put it in the end zone to get more points. Uh, we've missed some big opportunities too downfield. Okay, coach. Good luck to All you right. in the second half. 
10-7 right now. Mizzou right in it against the number of very Third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners with only a three-point lead at the half. Joel Myers along with Dave Lapp, and we wondered at the very beginning of the telecast whether this was going to be a coming-out party for redshirt freshman quarterback Brad Smith. Safe to say he is impressed. Eight carries, 80 yards, not a bad average. Not a bad effort at all. He is an outstanding quarterback, great running back. And, and he's a running back with a, with a howitzer hanging off of that right shoulder. Here he throws a little receiver screen to Gage. Then they run a quarterback counter to the left side for significant yards. A, a called play. That was not improvisational. And this is a called play as well. Look at the backside guard and tackle get their blocks. And Smith bounces it to the outside, making it a 10 to 7 football game. And the other side of things, Nate Hibble's taking hits. He takes a sack out of the red zone, and he got hit all half. And right now, Eric Clements, our man down on the football field, extraordinaire, by the way, has spoken with head coach of, uh, of Missouri, Coach uh, Pinkle. And what did he have to say, Eric? All right, Kyla. Thank you very much for that compliment, by the way. Coach Pinkle said, hey, listen, in the second half, we cannot let them have big plays offensively. A few too many near misses for Oklahoma in that first half for Coach Pinkle's liking. Also, when they get opportunities, they got to take advantage of them against the number three ranked team like they did late in the half when Brad Smith scored on that 25-yard touchdown. Guys? Trey DiCarlo kicks it away, and here we go with the start of the second half. And it's going to be brought back by Marcus James, the little guy across the 20. And then hit from behind as he's down at the 23 in the arms of Clint Ingram. Well, the mobile T first half numbers. Missouri Ooh. came back in the second quarter, and the rushing yards, the difference. Yep. Missouri staying in the game, but don't forget 80 of the 102 belong to the quarterback. And really, everything else fairly, fairly even, Stephen. Uh, third downs, neither team. Missouri doing a better job, actually, on third down. One turnover suffered by Missouri. The redshirt freshman Smith threw an interception, but that's been it. Great football game. Both teams playing at a very high level. Well, now we're ready to go after a bit of a delay from the referee. Three wide receivers set, and Apron the only one in the backfield. From the 22 for the Tigers. And Smith in trouble. Trying to run through people, but they're too big, and especially the play of Jimmy Wilkerson, the left end, the junior from Omaha, Texas. So, that was busted from the start. His knee almost went down right away. Jimmy Wilkerson led this uh, Oklahoma defense last year with 18 tackles for loss at the defensive end position. He gets another one tonight. And here's a guy that played quarterback in high school, Jimmy Wilkerson. And he, uh, he he rushed the football for, for 1,400 yards and threw it for over 1,200 and had 111 tackles as a linebacker. Kept getting bigger and stronger, now playing defensive end. Great athlete up the edge. Loss of four, short drop. The tight end's available past the 25. And they get it to bid. Ben Fredrickson, the senior from Westminster, California. Wilkerson on top of him again. And Brad Smith, uh, where has he thrown the ball successfully tonight? Well, not very successfully down the football field. He's been very successful checking down in the intermediate ranges. He's got uh, three completions, about 70 yards a pop on the left side. Averaging the three yards of completion, but this big one down the middle was a big play. Now on third, a little more than three, almost four. This is where he's had all his success. The quarterback run out of the shotgun. Will it work for the first down? No. They stand him up right at the marker. He did not get it. Wilkerson pushing it back with the help of Lance Mitchell, and he looks like he's about a foot short. Now, he reminds me a little bit of Michael Bishop at Kansas State with his ability with that quarterback running package out of the shotgun. Michael Bishop was a thicker, stronger player. This guy's got more speed. Smith is faster than Michael Bishop, a different type of runner, but equally effective. Well, it looked like he's short, and it looked like he's short by about it, at least a foot. Kid never quit on the play, though. Give him credit. It looked like he wasn't going to get close. Good call, Joel. So it'll be a punting situation coming up for Missouri. You know they're not going to go for it this deep in their own territory. And during Bobby Stoops' era, during Bob Stoops' era, they have blocked 10 kicks. We'll have to see if the, if the heat is applied here. Brad Smith doesn't want to leave the field. He keeps looking over to the sideline like, Coach, let us go. I think once they spot this football and, and get everything going, the punt team will be on the field. I do not see Coach Gary Pinkle taking this kind of chance with this field position. We're 91 seconds into the third quarter, and nobody expected Missouri, let's face it, to be this close at halftime to begin with. So, Brock Harvey, the sophomore from just outside of Jefferson City, 
Missouri, the state capital. Tries to boom one away. Antonio Perkins, the dangerous one who's already got two touchdown returns on punts this year, is back at the 25. Can he hang it up? And that is a beauty. Perkins down to the 22. Great hang time. No place to go. The putter made the difference. Brock Harvey held it way up there. Marcus King, the first one down there, but that hang time was sensational. Brock Harvey coming into tonight's game, averaging almost 40 yards, net punting, 11th in the nation. Great one there. Well, we had our question earlier, should graduation rates count in the BCS formula? Surprising that it was that much the other way. 55% said no. I'd, I'd like to see graduations count. I'd love be, that accountability. Before point differential. Point differential doesn't count as much anymore. I'd eliminate it. <laughs> I'd rather see graduation rates count than blowouts. Oklahoma first and 10 of their own 21. Up by three and hit out of the gun. Quick one. He's got Peoples available. Big push in the corner for Will Peoples. He's out of bounds short of the first down. Pulling it off in front of Michael Harden. You know, you almost think Oklahoma at times might be better off going with a pro set. Two backs in the backfield, protect Hibble, and let him throw the ball down the football field. I mean, Hibble's got a nice arm, and he's a very accurate thrower. And they don't want to go with the two back set. Very, uh, Oklahoma just doesn't do it at all, but Hibble could drive him on. Second and two. On second and two. Griffin spins. He's close to the first down. I believe he got it. Sean Doyle. Tried to deny him, the senior linebacker from Overland Park, Kansas. But good pursuit down the line. As Doyle got over there, also R.J. Jones. R.J. Jones had three interceptions against Troy State for, for Missouri. That's That set a school record. Three picks in one game. That's a nice night. So the rebuilding, and it really is a rebuilding program for the University of Missouri. They had their problems in the second half of last season. But now they put more speed at positions. And Coach Pinkle told us, I remember last year when we spoke with him, before the season ever began, Dave, he said, I've taken a fullback and put him at defensive end now because I lack team speed on the defensive side of the football. So they had to make early adjustments. But it seems like with some of the kids they brought in that are either working as true freshmen and playing now or the ones on the scout team, they might have turned it around already. Well, what they did in the first half of Oklahoma was noteworthy. Oklahoma had outscored the opposition 85-3 to in their first four games in the first half. And, and Missouri scored the first touchdown of the season against Oklahoma's defense in that first half and only down three. That's significant. So now first and ten, Hibble out of the gun. And throws it away. Just trying to get it away in the neighborhood of Quentin Griffin. But don't forget, you can start with the NFL later tonight on Fox Sports Net. It's all presented by the U.S. Postal Service. The NFL show, Sarah Gusu, Michael Irvin, DeMarco Farr, Tommy Davidson, Chris Myers, trying to corral those guys. Irvin matches up. He'll take on Tampa Bay's Warren Sapp. They go one-on-one. -on -one. They'll dissect the fantastic finishes of some of the close games over the first four weeks of the season. Sarah Gusu also picking his six-pack for this weekend's game. Now the quick one out to Quentin Griffin. And good pursuit down the line. Actually, it's Trent Missouri, Smith. And it was Trent Smith. Yeah. The tight end over on that side. And actually, he, he lines up uh, in the slot. What they do with him, about, about half the time he lines up as a normal tight end. Then a lot of times he'll line up in the slot or as a wide receiver. If you want your kid to grow up to be a receiver, listen up. Went to go down. Ooh. I'll tell you what, four or five Missouri, you talk about gang tackling, he got peppered by about four or five defenders. That's running to the football. Oklahoma only three of nine of their third down tries. Missouri stacks the line. Give it on a quick slant, and it's a completion. Taking it in, Curtis Vagan. Will he go the distance? To the 25, he will. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Mizzou gambled, and yeah. they were burned. R.J. Jones is the guy that rolled the dice. R.J. Jones went for the interception. What you have to do, if the ball is going to be caught by Fagan, tackle him and limit it right there. And Jones went for the football, did not get the football. Fagan caught the football and took it to the house. Big gamble by R.J. Jones. Watch him right here up top. And there's Fagan. Watch him go for the football. No, doesn't catch the football, doesn't make the tackle. Off to the races. That's a, that's a big play, 
You have to give Oklahoma credit, and you have to give Fagan credit. But Jones took a big risk. Dick Carlo got it through just barely. Almost hooked it. And Oklahoma has some breathing room early in the game or early in the second half. Three and a half minutes gone by in the third. Sooners lead it by 10. And brought to you by Kia Sarah. One company, countless solutions. By New Mix Grills from Healthy Choice. Big grill taste without the grill. And by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. What a view of the columns. Jesse Hall. Beautiful night in Columbia, Missouri. The Big 12 opener. Missouri Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners at Oklahoma with a big play. Shaganya Mitchell going back along with Marcus James. Man, James wanted to bring it out. He'll stay in the end zone. And Missouri will have it for the second time in the second half. They went three and out with a punt the first time. Starting at their own 22. The big play. And you've got to worry when you're Missouri because not many teams can score 17 or more on Oklahoma to begin with. They only give up. 10 points a game. That is fifth best in the nation in scoring defense. And, and what Missouri was hopeful for was a low-scoring game, get into the fourth quarter, still in the hunt. And that can happen. But they have to answer here in the third quarter with points on the board. They have to cut it to a one-score game. Got to get a touchdown or a field goal to cut it to a one-score game and not be down two scores going into the fourth. Abram belted again almost as soon as he got it. He gets a yard, but Tommy Harris would not let go of him. So Tommy Harris again wrapping up the running back. This is Tom, this is Lehman, linebacker. Look at the eyes, the concentration. He makes the read, flows over the top. Tommy Harris gets penetration and disrupts, and Lehman just finishes it off. I mean, that's a that's a tandem of uh, potential All-Americans right there. Lehman, former sprinter in high school, 235-pound linebacker that runs 4440. That's illegal too. Second and nine from the Missouri 21. Wow. Darius Adlaw is going nowhere. Great pursuit on the play. That's McCoy, the nickelback. And McCoy is a guy, he's only had three career starts at Oklahoma, and he's had five takeaways. He's a big play guy for this defense, solid football player. The read he makes is extraordinary. Little hitch, screen, and he's right there. I mean, route, route recognition and... Sure tackle, great play in the open field. Junior from Jenks, Oklahoma. Another loss for the Tigers, a loss of a little more than two. And now third and 11. Smith from the gun. And a little bubble screen game. Not, not going anywhere. Easy play. It was Corey Klein. He ran right back into the pursuit. You talk about depth of a play. They didn't give it a lot of time, did they? No, Corey Klein was spying the screen. I mean, it, it almost like the, like the defensive call that was made, they had a defensive lineman that was spying the potential screen, and he was all over it. Great recognition, and the inside-out pursuit was fantastic. So all of a sudden, Brock Harvey, a very important Brock player Harvey, for the Missouri the Tigers Missouri. because of Antonio Perkin. Watch straight. Here comes straight. They have brought a blocker in for him right here. Perkins, deep for Oklahoma. Oh! got to it. He also got the putter, and there goes the fly. As it'll go out of bounds inside the 40, the referee threw the flag. Did he touch the football? Oklahoma's coaching staff, the sideline is going crazy, saying that he deflected the ball. If he deflected the ball, there is no foul. Did he get a piece of the football? And that's what they're saying on the sideline. Yeah, and they're saying it's five yards. It's not 15, so it's not going to be a first down for Missouri. Now, did he get a piece of the ball? Oh, he went right over the top. He did not get a piece of the football, and it's just running into, not roughing. And Missouri ought to decline the penalty. Oh, he was close. Let it go Against the Oklahoma, 38. penalties refused. First down. They will, because it was a good punt, and a roll of about 10, 15 yards for Missouri. And Oklahoma's going to have it back inside their own 40-yard line. Straight almost got uh, kicked right in the face mask on that one, trying to block it. Well, they got the man out on the edge, but it was a little bit too late almost. As the number three team of the nation has a 10-point lead and the football, college football Saturday, presented by Kiyosera, continues from the heartland. What a sight, Columbia, Missouri. And the Tigers hung tough in the first half. Now will they wear down a wilt in the second half? Griffin in the backfield with Hibble. 
available is Will Peoples, and that's been there all night long. Missouri is giving a 10-yard cushion to the corner. They are. They're playing it very, very soft. And, and the reason is, in the first half, we saw more than one time they get burned over the top. And they respect the, the speed of the, the Oklahoma wide receivers, so they are giving that big cushion, as you described, Joel, and letting Oklahoma catch the football and rally up to it and smack them and see if they can separate receiver from football. Great percentage, great efficiency. Look at the, look at the yards per completion and per attempt. He's in the stratosphere. Three on the wide side. They'll run it to the short side. Griffin breaks the tackle. There goes Griffin down the sideline. He will go the distance out of the Touchdown, Oklahoma. Boy, what speed. 4-3-5 speed. And once he makes the first guy miss in the open field with that elusiveness, he just shifts gears. And, and I'll tell you, R.J. Jones can run, and R.J. Jones thought he took an angle to intersect him, came up short by about four yards. A little underneath handoff, and Griffin right there runs out of the tackle of the defensive line, and he gets to the edge, and it's goodbye. R.J. Jones thinks he has a shot, not even close. Came up way short. Doyle had him at the line of scrimmage. But a guy with those kinds of dimensions, as you mentioned, this is 5 5 5 6. No hitting surface. I mean, he slid right down. It's hooked off the upright, and no good on the extra points. DiCarlo has flirted with that before. So it's now a 16 point deficit for Missouri, making it still a two score game. Two Absolutely. Touchdowns. Two point conversion. Sooners in control, though. Brent Griffin has done it again. Another touchdown on the ground. And extra point was missed, so Oklahoma leading Missouri by 16. 10-7 lead for the Sooners. They have two quick scores on their first two possessions of the second half. 65-yard pass to Fagan. Now the 53-yard run by Griffin. And to Carlo, banged it off the upright. As Shardanya Mitchell is going back deep, along with Marcus James. Tough night for DiCarlo. He missed the uh, first opportunity, the first field goal, and then he hit the upright. So the kicking game has been a factor in this football game tonight. And especially with a miss by DiCarlo, as we mentioned. Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. The Tigers are back there. But that's against one of the best defensive units in the country. It'll be little Marcus James from the three. And leaping over. A would-be tackler did trip him up. He's past the 20 to the 20. Free of a flag down. Russell Dennison got a piece of him. Usually this is some sort of a legal block, and it could very well cost Missouri field position, hold or a legal block in the back or something like that normally. We have the old hold. So back you go. Another look at the touchdown and the line play and the movement up front. Yeah, sometimes, you know, Oklahoma wants matchups and they, they change the strength of their formation and watch Doyle, the linebacker, kick his defensive lineman down inside and say, look, shift over. And then he's the uncovered guy During and he can't make the tackle. Only, Griffin only runs Larry. through his tackle, bounces yep. it to the outside the and then shows tremendous First speed down. to the house. And Doyle, Doyle was there to make the play, but he lost the outside. You know, he got hooked. And, and once he contacted Griffin, very little hitting surface. He slid down him like a barber pole, and Griffin was out. He makes that first guy miss all the time. So Missouri after the mark off, has it for their own 13. Smith wanted to go to Gage on a double move, trying to make a miss, and he's down after a gain of three to the 16-yard line. Eric Clements. All right, Quentin Griffin, you saw him explode for that long touchdown run. He has done it all. He has a couple of SI covers, one national championship, but he has stayed the exact same way in this his final season. The first one to practice, last one to leave. Very humble individual. He is the reason for their, them having a heart and soul on this Oklahoma offensive team. Quentin Griffin guy. Absolutely, Eric. Got a little follow-up on that after this play. Second and seven. Ball to the 16 of Missouri. Time for the quarterback and the crossing patterns there for Justin Gage. Boy, what a nice tackle for the linebacker, though. Lance Mitchell. He's got the first head of the 25, but I think Gage thought he was going to be able to go down the seam. You know, the thing about Quentin Griffin, his freshman year, his true freshman year, they were going to redshirt him. Bob Stoops is going to redshirt Griffin. In about the seventh or eighth game, they had an injury at running back. They said, you know, Q, we want to we 
play it because we have a chance to go to a bowl game. But you're going to miss, you know, you're only going to play in about three or four games and have to burn a year. He said, if it's better for the team, I want to do it, Coach. Totally unselfish. They go to the Independence Bowl, finish with a 7-5 and five record. That's, that's a guy that's all about team, not him. On the play fake, here comes the Heat as they hit Smith. Right on top of him. Dan Cody, the sophomore from Ada, Oklahoma. So they've got him. We've seen Cody in the first half doing this, getting pressure on the quarterback. Here's a guy at 6'5", 270, and he's got two more years with the Sooners. Tell you, they, what they do is they retool. They don't rebuild. I mean, they have guys waiting in the wings. They do. They have guys waiting in the wings to take the place of great players. I mean, they lose Rocky Kalmus and Roy Williams, two great, great football players. And they have guys stepping right in, and Marcus James... Not doing well on the sideline. Second and ten. Blitz coming off the edge. They pick it up. So Smith has that lane over the left side. Makes it miss at the 30. Oh, what a run. He's got about ten. He may be short of the first down by about a foot. Jonathan Jackson finally caught up with him. You know, in the pitch, you have to bend at the knees. Because if you bend at the knees, you get your pad level low. And it all it, in line play, it's all about low pad level is the winner. Who's underneath whose pads here at the line of scrimmage? That is the key. And then the other key is separating from the blocks. Missouri does a pretty good job of sustaining contact. And then you have a guy of Smith's ability that can make people miss. Gosh, he has got something going on. He's tough. He's got the first down to the quarterback sneak just across the 35 to the 36. The Zoo's got to put together a drive inside of seven to play. Reset the chains, start the clock. Oklahoma has taken the sold-out crowd completely out of the affair. Look at this quarter, 141 yards to 16. And all because of two big plays. One gamble by R.J. Jones turned into a huge touchdown reception by Fagan. And then Doyle is in position to make a play on Griffin, and he misses the tackle. Griffin gets bounced to the outside for another huge play. So Missouri trying to run against one of the best defenses in the nation. Short one, double move, and going for the deep ball. Over the shoulder, grabbed by Gay. He's got it for a first down. What a perfectly placed ball. Not an easy catch. Justin Gage, 6'4", 210 pounds, working against straight, 5'11", 194 pounds at the top of the screen in the route. And as you described, Joel, Gets to the outside. Good protection, giving Smith an opportunity. Ball thrown over the outside shoulder, giving the only guy the chance to catch it, being Gage, his receiver. Nice throw, nice route. Smith, the quarterback keeper, gets a little block to the line. He took a shot near the 30, but pops right back up. Kid's tough. Teddy Lehman with the hammer. And Brandon Everidge yes. came over the top and just put the big old pop on him. And this is the quarterback counter once again. Backside guard and tackle pulling, getting their blocks. Woo! Brandon Everidge says, I'm gonna make you pay one time, young guy. Welcome to the Big 12. It's the conference opener. We hit the Big 12. Get that mouthpiece in. There you go, get it out of there, all right. About six yards, almost seven. On the carry by Smith. He's got four wide receivers setting up. No tight end. And now can he run for the first down? He will get there. He's run out of bounds near the 25. Derek Strait pushing him out. And how long his arms are? I'll tell you, when he throws a stiff arm, he's rushed for over 100 yards against this Oklahoma defense. That doesn't happen very often by running backs, never mind quarterbacks. This is a running back that can throw the football well. I mean... He has got the total package. He is a dual threat. And Gary Pinkle is thrilled to death to have this guy for three more years after this. And this is a guy that was also at, offered a scholarship to West Virginia. Right. He had made a commitment, hadn't signed, but made a commitment to Coach Pinkle and stayed with it. On first and ten. Going for the corner of the end zone. Justin Gage can't hang on. Derek Strait made sure of it. Well, Smith gave him an opportunity, couldn't quite catch it. Time for our Home Depot trivia. Well, which current Oklahoma coach was the runner-up to Bo Jackson? The 1985 Ooh. Heisman Trophy. Ooh. Put your hand down. I know that one. Put your it, hand down. That was the closest voting in the Heisman Trophy history. The runner-up to Bo Jackson. <laughs>
You are all over it as usual. Now second and ten for Missouri. Deep in Oklahoma territory. The blitz up the middle. Can't seize it. Trying to make the most of it. And takes a pop. And really is getting some shots. Now average over there again. Straight. Layman. But he pops right back up after his short gain. And didn't get much of a spot. Gain of only two. Now, is there contact in college football? Listen up a little bit. Woo! You know what? The young guy will learn not to leave his feet. When you leave your feet to hurdle one guy, in comes another to deposit you unceremoniously, just like Jonathan Jackson did that time. Not law in motion. Or make it a shift by gauge. A third and eight. And moving up front should be a free down. Fire on the flat. Gage has it. Touchdown, Missouri. Well, no flag. I guess he didn't get in the neutral zone, but I saw the same movement you did, Joel. Here's the movement. That's the early movement. Didn't get all the way into the neutral zone. Slant. Beautiful throw. Right between linebacker and corner. And Gage runs the great route, and Smith puts it right between the one and the two. So with so much time left in the game, Missouri's not going to gamble. They'll go for the extra point, the conventional way with Michael Matheny. Trying to make it a nine-point deficit, which they do. Missouri bounces right back with their first points of the second half. 5.27, left of the third, 23-14, Oklahoma. Justin Gage with a big play on a perfect throw. Gage he came into the game first of the Big 12, fourth of the nation, with eight catches per game. So far today, he's got eight for 118 yards. There's that funky bunch formation covering kicks again. Fagan, Savage, wait for the kick. It is going to be Savage from the goal line. Now he got he took a knee. Goal. He took a knee when he caught the football. That's a touchback. You're when he right. caught the ball, his Good right call. knee was down. Inadvertent. He didn't understand that he had put it down. Yep. You're right. He well, put it down right at the goal line. Watch the right knee. As he catches the football, boom, it's down. He's down right there. Touchback. College football, when the knee's down, you're down. And the Missouri Tigers are not complaining. So, kind of a whimsical look on the face of Bob Stoops. Disbelief. Like, what next? Griffin in the backfield with Hibble. Griffin, Belgian. Still, though, he gets it past the 21 to the 22. Let's head down. Eric Levins. Well, you just got an idea of how talented Richard freshman Brad Smith is. Upon recruiting him, Coach Gary Pinkle's final test was meeting Smith's church family. After spending three hours there being examined by Smith's church family, he was finally approved. And the deacon told Coach, I don't think you know what you've got your hands on. I think tonight, <laughs> fellas, he does. I think he's got a pretty good idea. Yeah, he sure does. He he's said special. We, he, Coach Pinkle said, we found it done. Yep. Now, heat on Hibble. Trying to add lib his way into a play, and he throws it wide of Curtis Fagan. But there was a Tiger in the neighborhood, Michael Harden. So a huge third down. Missouri trying to seize the momentum, trailing by nine. Final comment on Smith, the uh, red shirt freshman quarterback. Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator from Missouri, said, he's my kid's idol. And I can't think of a better idol for a young man to have. I'm proud that Brad Smith is my son's idol because this guy is as great a football player as, as he is. He's even better off the field. A super, super individual. Third and close to nine. Hibble's got all down. He's going to try to run for it. Needs to get to the 30 and won't make it. That is not his strength. And Missouri is about to get the ball back. Tarpoff took his feet right out from under him. You know, you can't... You can't Hibble's not uh, not Brad Smith out in the open field. He tried to be Edwin Moses and do the old hurdle routine and came up short. He hit the top of the hurdle and went down. So Missouri holds for the first time in the second half. The previous two tries for Oklahoma resulted in long touchdowns. Justin Gage waiting for the punt. And they got their first pressure. Gage back penalty to run. It's off the helmet of the Sooners at the 30. Should be down right there. At about the 30-yard line. They don't have to talk about using your noggin. Yeah. 
That was Will Peoples down there on the punt coverage. So now Missouri ready to get the football back. The young man we've been talking about, the redshirt freshman out of Youngstown, Ohio, Brad Smith. He is a diamond. We got the feelings of his head coach on this young man earlier today. Well, I'm really pleased uh, to have a redshirt freshman, 18 years old, play at the level he's played. And so, um, you know, certainly a surprise. I, you know, I think it's very unusual to play like he's played, his poise. Uh, his confidence and his production. Uh, but, you know, this is the only fifth game he's played. You know, this, is, this is a new experience. Uh, obviously, every week's a new experience for him. And, uh, you know, playing against this defense will, will certainly you know, be a test. The one thing that impressed me the most, and looking at the numbers, because we don't know the young man personally, like the people that work with him every day, four games into his college career, he had committed only one turnover. Yeah, one turnover, no penalties. Hadn't, hadn't been the uh, reason for any penalties. I mean, he was not beating his own football team. He was beating the opposition regularly. Comment about Will Peoples. That ball hit him off the top of the head. He started covering the punt at 6-1. He's six feet now. <laughs> that sucker shrunk him. <laughs> Smith out of the gun, where they've seen most of their success. Abram bouncing off the man at the 30. He's down the sideline, still maintaining his balance. What a run by Zach Abram. Inside the 40, stunning. Oklahoma as Derek Strait makes the stop from behind. Well, Brandon Everidge is the is the defender that tried to just block him to the ground. And we talked about Abram, 5'10", 225. He just ran right through it. Watch Everidge, boom. Everidge makes the hit, and, and Abram says, that's not, you, you're going to wrap your arms around me. That was a face mask that was missed. And uh, Abram off to the races. Great effort. Good blocking up front. And, man, Everidge is a big hitter, but it didn't even phase Abram. Well, Banner ends their 29-game conference losing streak, so congratulations to Kevin Steele. The Banner Bears. Now, on the double move, Smith, a jump ball, Justin Gaines. Does he have it? They say he's out of bounds. He held on. Derek Strait on the sideline trying to cover. Although former basketball power forward. Now, remember, you have to have possession and one foot in bounds in college football. Possession, one foot in bounds. Did he have possession? Juggle, juggle. Nope, no possession. I, that's a good call. Well, from that that's angle, a good that's call. tough to see, though. It's a good call. Because he went down with the ball locked in his left arm. Now, Couldn't what, tell. It, it, like, like uh, it has been said before, one knee equals two feet. If you get your elbow or shoulder down in the field to play with possession, the official was looking. He had a good view. We were looking through his body. The official was looking right at the football. Second and ten. Smith on the quarterback keeper again with blockers out in front going for the first down. Will it get there? Dives and gets there. Boy, he is just slinking. He's tough to get a good hit on. He is. He's like Gumby out there. I mean, he bends. He's flexible. He's Gumby that runs a 4-5. I mean, that's hard to tackle. He just kind of contorts himself and, and makes people miss. Quarterback counter once again. Look at the, look at the patience. Just letting his blockers set up. He's got tremendous feet, tremendous balance, just a pure athlete. What a gift. Matt McCoy finally got to him, but not before he moves the chains again. Missouri down by nine at the 28 of Oklahoma. Abram, he was really caught at that time. No game. They almost took his helmet off. Teddy Lehman with a hit. That was the same blocking by the offensive line. They pulled the offside guard and tackle, but instead of quarterback, Abram ran the counter. So Baylor, Kevin Steele yeah. gets his first conference victory as the head coach of the Baylor Bears. Oh, and they're dancing in the streets of Waco. Can well, they no, dance no, away Waco? Not, now you can on campus, just can recently. Yes. Okay, well, they're, they're dancing <laughs> on campus anyway. I, you think what, do you, what do you think they're doing? The line dance? or they're, What is it, the Brazos River? They're swimming down the river. I'd be doing the funky chicken or something funky. T.J. Leon in for the first time, the senior from Norman, Oklahoma, second and ten. Smith popping it over the little guy. It's complete. Straight and Lehman converging. Man, it's a gain, a short one at that inside the 25. Not much there for T.J. Leon. Got to get points out of this drive if you're the Missouri Tigers. Nine-point game. Got to get something on the board. It's dicey right now if you're thinking about field goal scenarios. Third down and long. Got to get some yards to at least having a more makeable scenario field goal wise pretty strong numbers tonight but they need close to seven 
Looking over to the left side, goes over to the left side to Leon. Leon looking for another block, he won't get it. He's shut down to the 20-yard line. So McCoy actually with the tight end had in the previous catch. Now Leon does have his first grab, but Derek Strait put him down short by a little more than two. Decision, do you kick or do you, you go for to. it on fourth? You no. have to field goal and touchdown you need. You're in field goal range. You need two scores. you got to kick the field goal here, and it's so Absolutely. early. It's so early anyway, Dave. Absolutely. you got a quarter in, in, in a minute and 30. I mean, it's a given. But it's going to be. It's not a chip shot. About a 38-yard try coming up. Now the operation was operation wasn't a given. Deep snapper has struggled. Everything's been inside for Palmer. Let's see this one. To make it a six-point game, a good snap. Matheny though, did he block it out? Oh, no, he's got it inside the upright. Six-point ball game. It hit the right upright and bounced in. He glanced it off there. Unbelievable. So it turned out to be a chip shot, didn't it? A chip off the bank. Exactly. This is like billiards. He went off the. <laughs> Off, uh, he, he called the shot off the right upright, and it's just a beep, boink, and it goes <laughs> right, right by the, right by the old flag up there. What? what it, it, he's leaking, 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 ting in. Ooh, man, that's tight. I'll tell you something. You sound like a video game up here. <laughs> <laughs> so Missouri celebrates with 10 unanswered points, and they make it a six-point game. With 67 seconds left in the third quarter. It's now Oklahoma 23, Mizzou 17. And I don't think anybody thought Mizzou was going to hang around this long. In Missouri, their their goal was to get into the fourth quarter with an opportunity to win. They're a minute and seven seconds from getting into the fourth quarter, one score down in this football game. Their game plan is being answered to, to this point. Going back deep once again, the combination. Well, Savage and and it's going to be taken to the five-yard line by Perkins. Across the 20, look out for the 25, and he felt it to the 28-yard line. By Orlando Good, the reserve wide receiver. Well, this week on Fox NFL Sunday, Michael Strahan of the Giants trying to slow down Emmett Smith of the Cowboys. It's all followed by Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. They're trying for the fourth straight, taking on Fred Taylor of the Jags. Other regional activity, it's all tomorrow on Fox. All of a sudden, that incredible game in Columbia, Missouri, with 58 seconds left in the third quarter. The number three team in the nation trying to regain the momentum they had just a couple of minutes ago. Kiwan Jones in the backfield. He'll get him the short side toss sweep. And they'll put him out early. Knock him out just across the 30. They'll spot it near the 31-yard line. Jason Simpson, once again, the roof. Other safety, they call the whip, forced him. And, and Joe, I, I think Missouri's been more methodical than Oklahoma. Oklahoma dominated the third quarter. It was due to missed tackles. R.J. Jones goes for an interception, misses a tackle on Sav or Fagan, and Fagan takes it to the house. Doyle misses a tackle on Quentin Griffin, and he takes it to the house. Missouri, Missouri has been more methodical. They have not forced a turnover yet, though. And they're one of the best teams in the nation to doing that. Griffin, big hole. He's got a first down. He's into the secondary and plus the 50, all the way down to the Missouri 42. The senior from Aldine, Texas, doing it again. And close to going over 100 yards with that carry. Nice job. Watch watch the lane right here, the natural lane that Griffin takes advantage of. you got to close it a little tighter. I mean, you know, just got, you can't just wander up the line of scrimmage. Ellison has to tighten it down. He has to squeeze it a lot better than that. Good blocking by left guard and left tackle, but Ellison has to squeeze the point of attack. He just kind of took himself out of the play. 12 carries, 94 yards now for Quentin Griffin. And they'll keep going back to him until they slow him down. They collared him around the ankle. Sean Doyle got him low after a gain of three. They... Talk about feathering it out. Ellison, as you say, he feathered himself right out of the play. Yeah, he did. He got caught in no man's land, and he, and he kind of did it all, all by his lonesome. Nice blocking inside. I mean, that's that's just a great job. I mean, the point of attack was collapsed. They, they knocked right down inside. But they were expecting, you know, a little bit of help, a little bit of help by Ellison, who was unblocked. And Ellison was shocked he was unblocked and took himself out of the play. Well, that's the end of the third quarter of play as Missouri came back after Oklahoma dominated the first seven or eight minutes of the third 15 minutes. After three, 23-17 Oklahoma. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sarah on Fox Sports Net. Incredible day for redshirt freshman quarterback Brad Smith. Total offense, he's close to 300 again. Making 2003. He's a candidate next year from what I've seen. Griffin 
breaking tackles. Down to the first snap of the fourth quarter on second and long. He makes it third and short outside of the 36 of Missouri. Bynum finally got to the little guy. As you said, there's not much room to bring him down. Oh, look at him. 101 yards on 14 carries. Averaging over seven yards a pop coming in. He's doing exactly that. Just about his average. 7.3 coming into tonight's game, and he's at it again. Missouri has not beaten Oklahoma as a ranked team since 1983. They shut him up that day, 10 to nothing. You know, one of the assistant coaches, Andy Hill, caught the only touchdown of the game. Now, how critical the third down. And it looked too easy for Oklahoma on the quick one over to Mark Clayton. Well, you saw Again, when it's only third and four, Dave, they're giving him six, seven, eight yards off the line. Yeah, they're afraid of getting beaten deep, beaten over the top. And they're giving that big cushion. You know, they're... You, look at this. Look at, look at how far off the line of scrimmage he is. You know, I mean, that's, that's just saying, you know what? You got speed. And I'm afraid of your speed, Clayton. So I'm going to I'm going to give you an opportunity to catch the football and rally to the ball and bring you down immediately. First down, Sooners. Opening minute of the fourth quarter. They've got it to the Mizzou 26. Hibble going deep and up for grabs, almost intercepted. Ooh, Jones almost had it. It went through Brandon Jones and R.J. Jones almost had his fourth pick over the last two games. Jones and Jones. Is that a law firm or an accounting company? There's something out there. Jones on Jones. And uh, R.J. Jones blew a tire. He had a tire change down there. This Missouri program has been in hibernation for so long, almost a couple of decades now. I remember the 70s when they did have big ones. They had big upsets. That has not been the case for close to 20 years now. Now, second and 10. Quick one. Outside. The tight end, Trent Smith. Now... Oklahoma has to get some yards on this third and long. DiCarlo, the place kicker, has already missed a field goal, has already missed an extra point. It could be 27-17, but DiCarlo has cost them four points. Bob Stoops is thinking, geez, do I, do I have him try a field goal of over 40 yards? I don't think so. I think it might be four down territory. We'll have to see what happens on third down. His longest so far this year has been a 44-yarder. Now the critical third and long. Griffin, that also works in the backfield. Hibble, with time, pocket holds up well. Now it collapses, and he's down. It's a sack. They got him outside of the 26, back near the 27. Kenny, collapsing another quarterback. That's what's called the old coverage sack, Joel. Nowhere for Hibble to go with the football. And this is a guy you got to put two men on. And, and they do. They, you know, they kind of wash him down, pancake. Good job by Skinner. And, and nowhere for Hibble to go with the football. And he doesn't have that explosive start. So they are going to try the old 43-yard field goal attempt right here. A true freshman from Carrollton, Texas, with plenty of pressure. He already missed one, a 34-yarder. It's back. It's on its way. Plenty of distance. College well, wide. Pushed it right. He pushed it. And there is a flag down to the play. Another flag. A second flag comes in late. Is it the same thing or is it two different things? Are they going to call excessive celebration yeah, on Missouri? Lines, yes, the linesman came in real late. Yeah, and he saw Missouri jumping around. Boy, if they call celebration there, Gary Pinkle will blow a gasket. It's a legal procedure on Oklahoma. Same same uh, call by both flags. Missouri will say, nah, we'll take the, we'll take the play. Miss field goal. Illegal formation. On Oklahoma, there were only six players on the line of scrimmage. Penalties declined. First down. Missouri continues to have the momentum after the miss by DiCarlo. We'll see if they can take advantage of the situation. It was a miss from 43 yards away. Never had a chance. Tigers have it back. Down by only six. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zara welcomes you back once again to the heartland. The University of Missouri campus, the trophy room. In the college football offices here, Oklahoma number three in the nation clinging to a six-point lead. We're only two and a half minutes into the fourth quarter, so still so much time left in this baby. Now, with the overtime we've already seen today and this year, like the game we did against North Carolina State, Dave, and Texas Tech, anything yep. could happen. No question about it. Parity in college football. Smith wants to throw now, can he elude them? Yes, at the 30. Great speed to the 40. Look at him get a block downfield. Break through that tackle to the 40. This kid is incredible. Well, Lance Mitchell, the linebacker, was in pursuit, and it was no contest. 
and supposedly Lance Mitchell runs 4.65. If that's the case, Brad Smith runs a lot faster than 4.5. I mean, he just steps up into the pocket, and now he bounces, and look at look at Mitchell. No, no, no contest. And then down the football field, Gage working, Gage working, and he steps inside. A Perkins splits two defenders, picks up an extra seven yards. Big time, big time. And new one to go out of bounds. Didn't take the extra hit like we've seen with other quarterbacks that have suffered concussions on similar plays. First and ten inside the Oklahoma 38. Abram, anything? They've shut that play down since the opening quarter. No gain. It'll be second and ten. Well, this is Brad Smith's first crack at the national landscape, national television, and United States of America, welcome this guy right here, Brad Smith. He has got star quality written all over him. <laughs> that is one excellent athlete at the quarterback position. You know, you're dangerous. You're dangerous with an etch-a-sketch. I'm telling you, Brad Smith has already got over 300 yards in total offense. He averages 317 a game. He's rushed for 155 yards, 98 a game coming in on average, third best of the Big 12. Now, looking over to the slot, it was available early, backpedaling, and overshoots. Darius Outlaw. Well, that's not all bad for Missouri. But it could have been a disaster. Do you know how tough that play is? Well, I mean, he's backpedaling. He's, yeah, in the in the face of pressure, going away from the line of scrimmage, throws across his body to the left sideline from the middle of the field. He showed elusiveness and arm strength. Are you telling me we can make more visits to the University of Missouri in the future? I'm telling you that, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you that this guy is the real deal. You know, people are like, ah, you know, he played against Troy State, Bowling Green, Ball State. This is Oklahoma. This defense is legit, and he's doing it. Now third and ten. Can he get enough yards over the middle? He's got a first down. Darius Outlaw hangs on. Average gave him a shot again, but he hangs on to the 25. And you know what? Brad Smith is, as advertised, tremendous athletic ability, but so poised. I mean, he's not hes not excited. I mean, he's, he's in total control. And look at the patience in the pocket. He throws a dart. And, and it's just, and it's like, you know, keep, keep going. Keep going. You're something. I mean, you're making life easy for us up front. We love you, man. We absolutely love you. Now, Missouri trying to take the lead for the first time today. They trail by six. They've got a first and ten of the Oklahoma 25. Tough running for Zach Abram. He's doing his best, but every time he spins, somebody's waiting. That time, Dan Cody finally wrapped him up. It'll be second and ten. And this is where Missouri struggled mightily last year. Gary Pinkle talked about the fact that his football team wasn't strong enough, wasn't fast enough, wasn't well conditioned enough, and they got hammered in the fourth quarter. Here, they're playing the number three team in the country with ten and a half minutes to play off their feet in the fourth quarter. Gary Pinkle has done one whale of a job with his players here. Second and ten, Smith looking over and too tall again for this time. Sean Coffey, first time he went after the redshirt freshman from Cleveland. Look at the height on Sean And it Sean was a Coffey. little bit behind him as well. But you're right, 6'6 six, six on coffee. Man, that's a that's a heck of a coffee cup of coffee. There's 6'6. Six, six. That's a tall, that's not a tall drink of water. That's a tall drink of coffee. Well, Matheny already has a 38-yarder. This would put it in, if they don't get another yard at about 42, 43 yards. Smith trips to the wide side. Ten minute the line of scrimmage for Oklahoma. Quarterback draw. And he breaks tackles into the secondary. Forget about it. Cut down Missouri. Unbelievable. point away from taking the lead 10 men at the line of scrimmage he busted Everidge overruns it McCoy has no chance Smith freezes McCoy and bounces it to the inside the pylon this kid is whoo man <laughs> now Bovini in the spotlight and Missouri has the lead do you believe it the Tigers were just down 23 to 7. And now with a one-point lead for head coach Gary Pinkle. They have a 
haven't used their seats for some time now. 67,000 strong in Columbia, Missouri. Disbelief on the Oklahoma sideline. Well, Brad Smith will make you thinking about, think about blitzing. When he hits a crease, it's bye-bye. This bunch group has got some rhythm, don't they? They do. They, 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 Perkins Swain. and Savage headed to the side of Perkins. Look out. He returned to last year this distance, but not this time. He won't make it to the 20. What cover? Brandon Barnes down there. Are these kids pumped up, Dave? Look at Smith's numbers. Almost 10 yards a carry. In the second half, Brad Smith has been a show. I mean, this kid, he is so poised. He's a little stiff arm there. The slant pass for a touchdown to Gage. Just right on the money with his throw. And when he finds a, a lane, a rush lane, in the defensive line, if they lose their lane integrity, he takes it out the house. And this was just a fantastic, you know, it makes you think about not blitzing anymore. He's got McCoy in the open field one-on-one. -on -one. Ten men crowd the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma blitzes. He finds a crease and says, don't do that anymore. On first down, Hibble out of the gun. He's got space on the outside. Will Peoples definitely down the sideline with plenty of room. And that'll quiet him down to the 49-yard line. I still can't believe they're giving him that big a cushion on the side. And you know what? If they're going to do that, Joel, and let him catch the football, you have to tackle. And that was a missed tackle. I mean, it, it should have been about an eight-yard completion, but because of the missed tackle, Peoples takes it about an extra 15 to 18 yards. If, if you're going to let him catch the football in front of you, you got to end the journey right there. 10-04 left in regulation. On a first down, quick Griffin bouncing off the first. There is a flag on the play, right at the original line. Trent Smith. Did, did he leave early? Did Oklahoma have six on the uh, seven on the line of scrimmage? Illegal shift. Two men moving at the same time. Cost Oklahoma a gain of three on first down, but they got three snaps to make it up. So while they mark it off, we remind you. You can get your NFL fix tonight. Don't forget, it starts a day early. Join us later right after college football. Tommy Davidson, Tony Saragusa, Michael Irvin. Also, Chris Myers hosting. It's the NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service. That's tonight after college football on Fox Sports Net. Now the defensive coordinator for the Missouri Tigers. Matt Eberflus. Matt Eberflus. Yeah, they've got one of the youngest staffs we've ever met with. Exactly. He looks like he's 18. The screen, Griffin, and he can't hang on. Did he control it enough, though, to yeah. make it a catch? I think it's a catch and a fumble, and he recovered his own fumble. Okay, lost the handle once he took off. He is always moving so fast to begin with. He is. He's a blur. But he, but he has possession. It looks like he takes a couple of steps. It catches it, takes a couple of steps. And then loses it. Ooh, that's cool. He took a step and a half anyway. Oklahoma he never did tuck it. They've not turned the ball over today. There's only, been only, only one turnover in the game. Yep. And that was the interception by the Sooners in the first half. Now Hibble on second and long. Fires behind his man and popped away from Curtis Fagan by R.J. Jones. Ball thrown behind. Fagan to the slant. And with that turnover, that takeaway, Joel, Oklahoma's had at least one takeaway in, in, in 40 of their last 42 games. But Missouri's really taking care of the football tonight. Bob Stoops coaches aggressiveness, and he's got size and speed, and that aggressive mentality and the physicality of the players results in defensive takeaways a lot of times. Biggest third down of the game for Oklahoma. They need to shift the momentum, trailing by a point. Trips to the wide side for Hibble. Here comes he Hibble's down. 40. The blitz paid off. Russ Bell finished up the play. The junior tackle. Every single member of the defensive line got a tremendous first step. Watch the takeoff. And they all hit an edge. And look at that. The, the, they all simultaneously beat their pass protectors. I mean, it was meet at the quarterback like a four-lane interstate. Blake Ferguson defended away. Justin Gage waits back deep for Missouri. Not Marcus James, but Gage at the 20. 
high one, but a very short one. And Mizzou will stay away from it, I believe. Wow, look at the bounce. Great bounce for Oklahoma all the way inside the 20. That is a 20-yard roll just about. It hit close to the 35, and it dies near the Missouri 16. Well, there was only three teams. Well, the only conference that could say they had three teams undefeated. The Big 12 to start play today. Texas still alive and well with a goose egg when it comes to the L's. But Kansas State could not say that after losing at Boulder today. It's a great game. As Colorado upset Kansas State 35-31 and has Colorado shown what they're made of. Coming back and beating UCLA after losing Oaks, Oaks leaves, and now with a big victory at home. Well, they're the defending Big Ten, uh, 12 champs, and they have the heart of a champion. Smith on his own. And nothing there as he takes a shot at the 17-yard line from Lance Mitchell. Back downstairs. What's the latest, Eric? All right, Oklahoma, of course, coming off the field after that sack. Everybody, as Dave Lapham said, had a meeting at the quarterback, and they all looked up at the replay to see just how bad the protection was on that particular play. Meanwhile, Smith is hurt after that last run. He's shaken up. He's being attended to by the official on the field. Right now, all the momentum with Missouri, but it would be a big, big blow if Brad Smith couldn't finish this game after taking a hard shot on the sideline here. He took here the Oklahoma side of the field, guys. Right to the head, Eric. He took a, a shot right to the head, and right now he's trying to decide if he's in Columbia or Norman. And the trainers are looking at his eyes to see how clear they are. And, and watch as ducks his head. Ooh, he took helmet yes, to helmet. Lance, Lance, Lance Mitchell. Mitchell. Just a tremendous blow to the head of Brad Smith. But it looks like he's negotiating his way off the field. He's not zigzagging. He's not serpentining. So he looks like he's got his head cleared up a little bit. Now they bring in a quarterback who has started in the past, though. He has not yet taken a snap today, and that is Kirk Farmer, who Coach Pinkle told us. Here. Now here's the senior. And he started 14 games over the last three seasons. He's had seasons wiped out, though. Good portion of one due to a broken leg. But Coach Pinkle said he's been really supportive of Brad Smith. Ah. Well, Missouri jumps. And all of a sudden now, a different voice, a different cadence. Absolutely. Different timing, different voice, different cadence. Kirk Farmer, after he lost the job, he said, all I'm going to do is compete every day in practice to get it back. Prior to the snap, false start. Missouri, five yards, still second down. And now Brad Smith is going to come right back in after the loss of five. So Smith clears out the cobwebs. And you can understand it after we saw the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact from and Lance he, Mitchell. And he was trying to get down. I mean, he was trying to assume the fetal position, get down a little bit, and uh, and he took it right in the noggin. Oh, first intercepted, and he's picked up. The interception for Everett, and Oklahoma's got a team in Missouri territory. Well, I wonder if the cobwebs were totally clear. It's interesting, though, you would throw deep in your own territory at this point of the game. Oh, man, that, and that young man's bitterly disappointed. He's, he's only thrown two interceptions on the season. He threw one tonight and just staring down his primary receiver, Gage, trying to hit the slant again, and Everett's just followed the eyes of the quarterback right to the football. And you got to believe Gary if you're going to throw the slant as many times as they have tonight, you better mix things up. Gary Pinkle was right over there to his young quarterback, Brad Smith, saying, we're with you. Don't worry about it. You're the reason we have the lead right now. Don't worry. We'll come back. Griffin and Works. They give over to the near side. Not much there for Works, but he lunges for an extra yard to the 14. Yeah. That was something because Pinkle knows he needs Brad Smith in a big way when they get the football back. And turnovers have been a big story in both these teams' successes early this season. Missouri came in plus 10. Now they're plus 8, minus 2 tonight. Oklahoma came in plus 8. They're plus 10 now, plus 2 on the night. So turnovers have been huge for both teams. Antoine Byman. Find him shaking up on the play, so he leaves the field. He's their best edge pass rusher, Joel. That's a big blow to lose him. Ronaldo works. Kiwan Jones comprising the backfield for Oklahoma. And right now, a chip shot of a field goal for the most part for the caller. If they can't pick up the first down. A two-back set. That's real rare. Hibble on second and eight. Into the end zone he goes. It's just wide of Antoine Savage. R.J. Jones trying to keep up with him. It was available, though. 
Our Home Depot trivia question we asked earlier, which current Oklahoma coach, the runner-up to Bo Jackson for the 85 Heisman Trophy. How about their offensive coordinator, former Iowa quarterback Chuck Long? Yeah, he did. Here he is right here on the very end, Chuck Long. He had a great career for Hayden Fry at the University of Iowa. They've only lost one game, 5-1, and one, one loss to Iowa State, their big rival. Well, the timeout has been called by Oklahoma to find out what they do. Trailing by a point when we come back on third and eight. Saturday on Sportsnet, brought to you by Kia Sarah, one company, countless solutions. By Subway, eat fresh. By Zena, digitize the experience. Man by Speed Channel, the new home of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. The Memorial Union. And what a beautiful campus. We're at the University of Missouri. Works at Griffin. Flanking. Nate Hibble. Third and eight from the Missouri 14-yard line. Pressure on the edge over the middle. And too tall. Trying to get it to Curtis Vagan. Well, that never had a prayer. Missouri decided to bring six. They said, you know what? Third and long. Hibble is one-dimensional. He doesn't have the quick feet of a Smith. He's staying in the pocket. He's going to throw it. So we know we have... A stationary target. We're going to bring six people and make them hurry his throw. And it comes back to the man who struggled, DiCarlo. He's missed two field goals and an extra point tonight. All makeable. Although the last field goal, 43 yards is no gimme. See if he can convert here. For the lead, a 31-yard attempt. He just missed from 43 yards away. Fake. And now the fake into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. They went to the tight end. Chris Chester on the score. So Bob Stoops, the gambler, who comes through. You know how much courage it takes to do that? I mean, that, that is phenomenal. And Bob Stoops is going for two. Doesn't have a choice, leading by five. You know, I'm, I lost track of the holder. Was the holder McCoy? If the holder was a backup quarterback. Holder Matt McCoy, the junior from Jenks, Oklahoma. Well, I'll tell you, McCoy throws a darn good ball then. Because, you know, usually you see a backup quarterback throw a pass like that. McCoy's the, the normal holder, and then they didn't they didn't tip their hand with a different holder. And McCoy comes out and throws a strike. Double coverage. I mean, Missouri had good coverage on Chester. Great throw, great catch, and courage by Bob Stoops to call the play. Now the two-point conversion. you got to believe Quentin Griffin is going to touch the football. He's back there with when I go work. They're going to go right here to their big tight end, Trent. Looking for Smith. Back of the end zone. Yes. They find Curtis Bacon for two. But oh, what a job in selling the fake. And then the throw you talked about. Boy, McCoy. I mean, right. Look, there's, there's good coverage. But that is just a perfect throw. I they mean, there's a couple of guys back there. They never located the ball, though. No, they didn't. They it, really didn't turn around and look at the football. But but the coverage wasn't terrible. And McCoy throws a nice ball. I mean, that... I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I mean, you have you have bracket coverage on that and, and they get it done. You have you have Kenny and, and, and you have King in coverage and McCoy throws a strike and the two point conversion along the back of the uh, the end zone. Just doing the tightrope back there is Fagan. They ran a little double crossing pattern and Trent Smith went underneath and Fagan crossed behind them. And it was on the back line for a two point conversion, seven point game. And look at the congratulations McCoy is getting. That is one huge play for that nickel defensive back slash quarterback. He's slash. Now, was he in bounds when he caught it? He got the call. Possession, one foot down. Where's that right foot? Left foot was out of bounds. Left foot's down, though. Left foot's down. That's a catch. Left foot's down. What was down first, though? That's a good call. And a tough one. Yep. Was the left down? Right. Or did the right hit first? Yep. And he had possession and only one down. But which one was down first? And it was, it was simultaneous. That's tough. We're doing a we're slow motion stop. They have to make it right on the spot. They go away from James. It's going to be instead the wide receiver with some nice moves to Daniel Mitchell all the way to the 30-yard line. So Missouri's got it in decent field position. Well, the pressure back on the Tigers. And Richard freshman quarterback Brad Smith, as they tell Mitchell, will stay in the game, which tells you that it's going to be a spread attack. And, and Lance Mitchell gets a big assist because Lance Mitchell is the one that goes helmet to helmet 
boom, right there, it, it, it knocks Brad Smith woozy. Farmer comes in, different cadence, and they get a false start. And then the very next play, Smith comes back, and Everidge reads the route, reads his eyes, steps in for the big pick that led to the touchdown. Now, Johnson. Now, Brad Smith, rather, with plenty of room past the 35, up to the 38. He gets eight on first down, but, you know, back to the interception. They have 14 points off turnovers. Don't forget about the first turnover. That turned into a 20-yard or 20-yard field goal, so it's 10 off turnovers right now. 10 off turnovers, which negates seven points missed by your kicker. Two field goals and an extra point. How do you so, think DiCarlo felt after they went for fake? Oh. Yeah, well, and that's really another reason that went. That was part of the thought process that went through Stoops' mind, I'm sure. From the 38, second and two. Abram will get the first down, but just barely across the 40. Teddy Lehman on the hit. But that's what makes Bob Stoops Bob Stoops. I mean, you know, he, he he's is, got guts. He has guts, and that's Mike Stoops' brother, the defensive coordinator. And, and, and Bob is, is just, I'll tell you, he, he's... He has his kids believing it's just they wait to win. It's not like they expect to win. They wait to win. And it, it all starts with him and the attitude that, that's pervasive. T.J. Leon, the only one in the backfield. Four wide receivers to spread the defense. It'll be a five-man rush. And Brad Smith can't get away from Teddy Lehman. It's a sack, and that's a rarity in this game for Oklahoma. Sure is. I think that's only their second one tonight. They came in with four. I think that's only their second sack on the night, I believe. So now second and about 14 coming up for Missouri. Clock working against him now. Inside of five minutes to play. Again, three wide receivers this time. Shallow cross for Justin Gage. Doesn't do much, though. They read it perfectly. Back to the 40-yard line. Lehman on his back. And now, the biggest third down of the day for Brad Smith and Missouri. And Mike Stoops and the defensive uh, staff and players are, are glad that it's third and 11. Because third and medium, third and short, it's no challenge for Brad Smith. Third and 11 presents a little bit of a challenge anyway. Missouri still has all three of their timeouts left. Now Smith with a double move, looks down the middle, and it's intercepted. He had, I thought, coming over to this side, Gage, as he took a shot, outlaw, was the intended target. Eric Bassey with the pick. So Oklahoma coming up with the big plays, three takeaways, and none Bass so far for Missouri. Bassey is the replacement of Roy Williams at the safety position. And Bassey just has great coverage. He looks like the primary receiver. I mean, he, he was just all over outlaw. And, and Brad Smith takes a late hit and, and, and takes it down to the curb, provided by Dan Cody. But he saw the interception and dejected. Back-to-back -back interceptions for Oklahoma. Griffin can't spin away, gets a yard. And now Missouri. Will have to stop them. If they can't stop them after three snaps, then they have to start thinking about using their timeouts right away. I really thought that if it was going to be a close game for Missouri, it would be very low scoring. This is a lot higher scoring football game than I thought it would be for it to be this close in the fourth quarter. And this Oklahoma team, top ten in scoring defense, giving up an average of the first four of only ten points a game. Gives you an idea of what Smith presents for the opposition. Griffin, it works. In the backfield, it's out of the gun. It's Griffin. And he breaks tackles effectively again. Should have been a loss. Instead, he's got it to the 38. Stayed in bounds. James Kinney thought he had him. Ferguson finally made the hit. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net, Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fax. The College Football Saturday studio show, produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Waters. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry. And the Vice President of Field Operations is Karen Newman. I'll tell you what, all, all our guys that provided the pictures tonight, they brought their A game as well. Boy, we got some good shots of what took place in this football game. It was excellent. Been that kind of night in Columbia, Missouri. Now Oklahoma hitting only a third of their 
third down tries. They've got five for 15 so far, and now they use their second timeout. So they've only got one left. Missouri still has three on the board. They stop it with 235 to play. And, could, and we talked about it frequently. Can Missouri afford not to get up on the line of scrimmage close to the wide receivers? And, and really, with Hibble, he's one-dimensional. They know if it's, a, if it's a shotgun snap to Hibble, he's throwing the football. So they're going to have to provide the tight coverage. I, you know, now they have to decide, do we blitz? And if we blitz, we have to provide tighter coverage. I mean, all that is, is flying through everybody's heads right now. It's a very young Missouri team for head coach Gary Pinkle. And now the frustration. This week, and it starts tomorrow. Fox NFL Sunday. Michael Strahan of the Giants trying to corral Emmett Smith of the Cowboys. And Donovan McNabb of the Eagles. Will they get their fourth on the road here in Jacksonville, Florida? It's this week on Fox. That's great music. You know, give a little rhythm to that music. You know, nobody has left this ballpark. Absolutely. I mean, it is jam-packed. They wondered what it would take to get this program going once again. It's blackout. I mean, it's the lighting's good. Everybody's wearing black. That's why it looks like it's, you know, it's night. It is nighttime, but, it's, you know, good lights. See the lights. Everybody's in black, though. What a, what a football game these people have seen. And this kid is a beacon of light for the Missouri program right there. He is something special with a capital S. Brad Smith, the redshirt freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. Griffin. The single to the backfield with Hibble. Two to the short side. Room on the outside of the wide side. Hibble looking up in the middle. Now fires underneath the tight end. They don't get the first down. Trent Smith lost his footing. It'll be a punting situation. The Missouri should use the timeout right here. They should, absolutely. Clock moving. Yep. And they still haven't called a timeout. Up next on Fox Sports Net, Oregon and Arizona. So another top 10 team coming up. The number three Oklahoma Sooners trying to hang on. And Missouri is not stopping the clock. Interesting. And really, it took a while for the officials to set the football and start the play clock. And, and, and Oklahoma should just melt it down to the two seconds. Justin Gage waiting for the Blake Ferguson punt. And he will take it down very wisely with about a minute 45 left. One second on the play clock, they snapped it. Kicks it away. Gage calling for the first catch in Missouri. Needs to move. 77 yards to tie it up. So the Tigers have it at their own 23. Minute 39, all three timeouts remaining. But don't forget, by not stopping the clock, they lost a good 40 seconds. And this young man, <laughs> if he can bring his team from behind to tie this football game with a minute and 39 seconds to go, on top of everything else he's done, there's been a lot of good and some bad, three interceptions. They were all, all painful. But he has done a great job tonight. Two to each side for Brad Smith. He's got all day. Now, room to move. Makes it mess. Do you believe this kid? Unreal. Flag down, though. It's going to go against Missouri, I believe, downfield trying to block. Yeah, I think it's one of the big offensive linemen locked up. Locked up down the football field. And maybe get his hands outside the framework of the body. There'll be a holding penalty from that spot about the 40 142 yard line it looked like that well, was a first down for brad smith it'll be a whole oh, the other way out. the other way well the big guy was trying to go down through the block and he was held up that's a rarity isn't it well they, they didn't call holding against an offensive lineman so they must have called called one of the uh one of the tight ends or wide wide receiver it's going to be tacked on the end of the run it I was guess. while the play was in progress. So they're trying to determine exactly where the spot took place. Now it's, it's one of those. Is it a spot foul? Spot foul yes. deals, exactly. And, and do you decline it because you gain more yards than the five from the spot of the foul? They're Holy tacking it on. On Oklahoma. Ten yards from the end of the run. Yeah, tacking it on. So that turns out to be a gain of 27 yards, including the penalty for Mizzou. 90 seconds to play, and they only need 50 yards. And, and, and Bob Stoops is saying that. Isn't that from the point of the stop, uh, from, from the point of the spot? Why are you tacking it on the end? And he's kind of befuddled and bewildered. 
And I'm not sure he got an explanation he was real happy with. Seven point lead for Oklahoma. Clock running against Missouri. And Smith again with the lane closing. He's got about seven on that carry, and they need to call, they need to call a timeout. They finally do. But boy, they wasted some time. 62 seconds to play. Still, with two timeouts on the board, that's an eternity. Maybe they just don't want to give Oklahoma the ball back. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I think they're trying to score with as little time left as possible. And that's all that's all well and good. But if you try to take it, be too cute with it, it can backfire on you. And, and you, you might not have enough time to run plays even with timeouts in your possession. So, but this is a, you talk about growing up fast. How much pressure is this kid facing right now? 209 yards rushing against Oklahoma. This isn't, you know, <laughs> Troy State. A, a new Missouri quarterback record against the Sooners defense, which is outstanding. We talked about the Sooner team speed. Brad Smith said, what speed? You know, I mean, I, he, this guy's operating at warp speed. You know, Dave, last week he accounted for 350 yards of total offense, 213 through the air, 137 rushing. Tonight, he's got 209 rushings. We just saw a new Missouri record for a quarterback. Tack on to that, 174 throwing. So he's just below 400 in total offense. But he'd say, you can have all those yards if I didn't throw those three picks. You know, for all that you, good... You can, throw, you can throw the slant a little bit too often, can't you? Yeah, and, and, and for all the good, he's done an incredible amount of good but all of his interceptions resulted in points. And, and, and he's, he bemoans that fact. There's no doubt about it. But this guy is big, big time. Now, after the timeout, Missouri's got it. Second and short. Second and four. They put him down to the 44. Out of the gun where he's been so successful. He's got a wall to the right side. Over the middle and through the hands of the tight end, Fredrickson. Teddy Lehman in the back of the tight end. I'll tell you right now. I don't know how much I take the ball out of his hands. They had a wall and a seal over to the near side. Wide side of the field, he could have run for 15 yards easy. That's true. And, and once again, remember in college football, the clock stops when you generate a first down. So they still have two timeouts remaining. But they only have two seconds. snaps now. F right, 58 seconds on the clock. And so what we were talking about, being judicious with the use of timeouts, you can almost play it too cute. They need four yards and two snaps. Smith looking underneath. Now going and throwing a low percentage pass behind Sean Coffey, the redshirt freshman. So it's down to one snap for Missouri. And it's interesting that they haven't kept it in the hands of Brad Smith. And, and on this fourth down play, snapping the ball from the left hash mark, I would get him out of pocket, give him a run pass option to the right side. Move the pocket. Yep. Just by design to a strong side, his right side, which is right now the wide side of the field. Or I don't know if I would rather have a personal protector out there running naked and let him get out of pocket and, and, and put a lot of pressure on the outside linebackers and corners. But And I'd also tell the kid to call timeout if you don't like what you see. This is it. Fourth and four. Smith looking to run. Will they get there? Diving. Oh, it's loose. he lost the ball. Loose ball. Who gets it? Still on the ground. Missouri, Oklahoma. Missouri. Missouri got it inside the 25. Wow. Unbelievable. Palmer, the big salty guard. The kid from Oklahoma, the kid from Norman, the tough guy. Now, they better regroup in a hurry. There's only 43 seconds left. Time they're out. going to talk about. Time out. They're talking about now. It's a fourth down fumble. He had the first down already. Do they bring it back to the point of the fumble? Yeah, they do. But I, I think he already had the necessary yards for the yeah, first he got down. Yeah, to the 39 when it came free. And that's what they're talking to Gary Pinkle about. The old Dave Casper rule. You know, fourth down fumbles, you can't fumble it. it, it forward on fourth down and advance it I think you can if you are recover your own fumble you said it you Joey can't, the man who gets it you can't have somebody else fall on your fumble when you fumble it forward on fourth down and Smith didn't come up with it so it goes back to the spot where he lost possession and man it's it's uh it's it's very dicey whether he, he makes it or not it looks like oh, he's got it by a yard looks like he makes it he wanted to go to the 40 he needed to go to the 40 the foot's on the 39, 39 yeah he's, he's got the first down yeah he does so they'll bring it back to the 39 and this they're trying to determine exactly where the ball was when it came out of, out of smith's hands boy there was a pop that ball came flying out of there the ball was down. The ball will come back to the spot of the fumble. It was beyond the line to gain. 
It's a first down. Now, Missouri's got to hurry because they'll start the clock, and they might want to call a timeout here. I, I, I think so. Now, now we're going to get up to the line. That, Is Oklahoma that, ready? That, that ball's out on the other th on the 41-yard line, not the 39. They've got a very generous spot. They put, they put the spot of the ball where he fell after the tackle. The ball came out two yards behind that at the 41-yard line, and they spotted it where he fell down at the 39. A big, big break. Big, big break for Missouri. Huge break for the Tigers is the drive and their chances are still alive. And Gary Finkel asking about the fourth down fumble. Uh, he's got the first down. They're not disputing that. I, he, he's yelling about the timeout or something. But he, but Smith lost possession of the football at the 41-yard line, not the 39-yard line. So I, if our Gary Pinkel obviously not aware of that, and he's still fighting for everything he could possibly get for his football team. But he got a big break right there. So Missouri still has a hope. They have one timeout remaining. And it wouldn't be alive. Now, had not for a, right they've at the received 40. a great spot. Right at the fort. Look, the ball's out. He has to get here to the 40-yard line. The ball's out at the 38 and a half. And this is where they mark it at the 39 where he falls for forward progress. The ball's out. And then it goes forward. And, that, and they mark it where he goes down. And the ball was out of there long before that. Big, big break for the Tigers. No review in college football. Nope. So now the Tigers are ready to go. They do have one timeout remaining, trailing 31-24. Can Smith do it again? Here comes the extra man up on the rush over the oh. middle. Too high for Sean Coffey. And he was wide open with room to move. Was Derek Straight ever? was beaten on the pattern. And he's 6'6". And Straight's 5'11". And man, he... Oh, boy, that was that was close. And it's hard to overthrow 6'6", six six, but it happened. So now second and 10. 39 seconds to play. Two on the wide side. Smith very rarely under his center. In trouble. Got it away inside. It's short of the first down. They might want to use their final timeout. It'll be third and about six from the 35. Zach Abram. And they will use their final timeout. So 27 seconds left. Options running out for Pinkle. Well, you, you got to start thinking about the hook and lateral and all those kind of all those kind of plays. Gary Pinkle's looking at his play sheet right now and thinking, 30, 27 seconds to go. It's third down. I have two plays left, basically to move the chains and stop the clock quickly. Then I can spike the ball to stop the clock without burning up downs. He's got to get a first down, then he can go up and spike the football and stop the clock because it would be a first and ten and, and save time that way. He has no, no more timeouts, but when, the, when they move the chains in college football, it stops temporarily, restart it, spike it, only lose a second. You've got to make your best call to generate a first down and keep the hope alive. And if you need to, after you get the first down, you've got a 6'4", 6'5", wide receiver, Justin Gage. You can take a chance in the end zone if you get him up against a small cornerback. Well, you got Gage and Coffey, and, and, and you go you go fade to both of those big old dudes and get the ball airborne and let them out jump people. Well, we talked about the level of competition earlier for redshirt freshman Brad Smith. It's far from over, but I don't think anybody will argue that this kid has arrived. Oh. And the University of Missouri is a quarterback for the next four years like Iowa State at Seneca Wallace. And he's even larger than Wallace. He's at 6'3", 200 now. Third and six. Moving the pocket by design. Throw is late. And it's intercepted. No. He had him available much McCoy. earlier. McCoy knocked it down. Darius Outlaw. And he's, you know what? I'll tell you something. Because I watched Outlaw the whole way. He didn't read his break because that ball should have been gone long before that. Outlaw, former quarterback. Making the change to the to the uh, wide receiver position. Abagu is the guy that, or uh, what's his name, the receiver that was injured. I'm, I'm sorry. Aboga. Aboga, yeah. Aboga is the guy that should be in the football game at this point in time, but he's got a broken rib. Aboga, who knows if he makes that play, but here's the fourth down, the play of the game right here. Fourth and six at the Oklahoma 35. Outlaw, he comes trips over to the far side, the wide side. 
Brad Smith has all day, and that's the end of the game for Smith and the Vikings. Oklahoma can celebrate. He couldn't pull the trigger. And you go back to a courageous call by Bob Stoops on fourth down. Instead of kicking the field goal, he says, McCoy, I'm running the fake, and you're going to throw it to our big tight end, and you're going to throw a good ball to Chest, uh, Chris Chester, and he beat double coverage for the winning points. Amazing football game. And, you know, Bob Stoops, I'll tell you, he lives to celebrate another day, as does do his Oklahoma Sooners. And just a whale of a game. So one snap, a knee taken, and it's all over. And Oklahoma escapes a quarterback they've got to deal with for three more years. So that'll do it. The number three team of the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, prevailed by seven. And as Dave Lappin just said, it's because of the guts of Bob Stoops that he had that much to go for and gamble like he did on the fake field goal. It was more than we could have asked for, Dave. Missouri staying within seven. Boy, the riverboat gamble, Bob Stoops. Big plays in this football game. Back and forth it went. Missouri is definitely going to be a factor in the Big 12. Missouri falls to 3-2, and two. Oklahoma now at 5-0. and oh. What a day for Quentin Griffin as well. A catalyst on the offensive side for the Sooners. For Dave Lappin, uh, Eric Clemens. I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us from Columbia, Missouri. Don't go anywhere, though. Right after a brief timeout, the Pac-10 is up next. Oregon and Arizona, a duel down the desert. So long, everybody, from Columbia.